Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. What a magnificent day for parade outside the stadium as the Aggies march on. And plenty of Aggies here to give us a gigum. And I mean thousands of folks have come down out of the hills. And folks, what do you think? They're calling the hogs in Arlington. Cowboy Stadium in Arlington, Texas is the site today for our game between Arkansas and Texas A&M. Hi everybody, Ron Franklin, welcome to this magnificent building here in Arlington, Texas. You know, Arkansas and Texas A&M have a great deal in common. Both are coming off football games that they could and probably should have won, but the game slipped away from them very late in each contest. What we're going to find out this afternoon is which team has the biggest hangover from those losses. Probably the team that has the biggest hangover will walk out of here this afternoon as the loser. For the Arkansas Razorbacks, they had a golden opportunity to knock off number one, and they were within a breath of it happening, but it simply would not happen, and that game, of course, was at Razorback Stadium. And speaking of Razorback, they are down in the tunnel right now and preparing to come to a tumultuous ovation from the home folks, and there are lots of them here that have come down from the hills, led by their quarterback. Texas A&M in a situation where they were on the road and lost their ball game up at Oklahoma State University and it was a late interception in that ball game as Ryan Mallett suffered with the Arkansas Razorbacks. So both trying to rebound here this afternoon and both players have told us well they think that that is something that is now behind them and we'll find out very very shortly. Right now we're still waiting on the Arkansas Razorbacks is maybe the only thing that holds them up all day long. It's certainly not us, but they're down in the tunnel and uh, have, uh, have not come out as of yet. We're expecting about 65,000 here today at this uh, beautiful arena in Arlington, Texas, and it's about half and half as far as who is pulling for which side, about half Arkansas and about half Texas A&M. Both full bands are here. The Arkansas band performed uh, just a little while ago down on the field and the Aggies came out for the pregame and also played the national anthem. Bobby Petrino, the head coach of the Razorbacks, and uh, reticent no longer. Here come the Hogs. As usual, Ed Cunningham joins me on the telecast, but it's very obvious Ed is not here with me right now because he's down on the field. And Ed has just returned from the Texas A&M locker room. Ed, tell us what you found out from the Aggies and also your reaction about this building. Well, I played in the old Cowboy Stadium, and I think it could fit inside of this place. And the Aggies admitted last year, a very inexperienced team, they were a little bit in awe of this building, and I can see why. But being in the locker room, it was very calm. As a matter of fact, Mike Sherman was walking around joking with a big smile on his face. Not a lot of adjustments going on. More just getting themselves ready and calm. And speaking of calm, Gerard Johnson, the quarterback, you mentioned the struggles he had against Oklahoma State. He looked completely composed, sitting there listening to his music, and wrote Dad on his wristband in honor of his late father, Larry. Here come the Aggies. The Aggies take the field, and we are just moments away from the opening kickoff between Arkansas and Texas A&M. So we're back in Arlington. Texas A&M has won the toss, and they have deferred to the second half, so they will kick it off. Randy Bullock prepares to tee it up at the 30-yard line. And uh, the single deepest man 
for the Arkansas Razorback is wide receiver Joe Adams obviously a speedster Ed Cunningham are you surprised that uh, with the coin toss and the fact that the Aggies wanted to put their defense out there first a little bit I think the the idea though is with Ryan Mallett coming off a bad game let's test him early and see if we can't get a turnover do you agree with what I said in the open we didn't get a chance to converse but but the team with the worst hangover probably is not going to win this football game both coaches felt good about their weeks of practice so we'll see well, this is a kickoff that goes six yards deep into the end zone, and Adams will not return it. So it gives us an opportunity to look, first of all, at the starting quarterback for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Uh, Ryan Mallett, 6'6", 238 pounds, leads the SEC in passing yardage and has so many records since uh, coming to the University of Arkansas. And we talked to him yesterday about uh, the bye week. They had a week off after Alabama, and if he would have rather got back on the field, he said, yeah, but... We got to work on a lot of the techniques, look at the mistakes we made in that game, clean those up. Sounds like he's really gotten beyond what happened against Alabama. Ronnie Wingo is going to start at tailback rather than Niall Davis. Movement, as you could see. An offensive lineman came out of his stance. That's Ray Dominguez. And it's going to be a five-yard penalty. 73, offense. Tom Ritter, our referee today, the officiating crew from the Southeastern Conference. And I'll tell you, it is very, very noisy in this arena. It may not be quite filled, but uh, the, the echoes are resonating from one end to the other. I can understand why Dominguez got confused. First and 15, and they'll go straight ahead with Wingo for a couple of yards, and that's about it. Lucas Patterson defensively. Nice job by Patterson. Good penetration. One of the things we also heard from Ryan Mallett yesterday, we have to run the football more. Same sentiments by his head coach. We'll see if that transpires today. Mallett, first throw of the afternoon, complete. Across the 25 and out to the 30, and with that second burst of energy, I think he may have picked up the first down. So let's take a look at the impact players following that gain of 12. Well, that was Jarius Wright doing a nice job of picking up the first down. Another explosive player is Joe Adams, leads the country in yards per reception. Every game they've had a 100-yard receiver have the Hogs. And Von Miller led the country last year. No sacks yet this year. Had a high ankle sprain in that first game. It's really slowed him down. And double teams also, also have slowed him down. You know, a lot of people are looking for number 40 every time the football is snapped. In fact, they run away from him on this play, and it's Niall Davis. He'll have three. When you look at what he did last year, speaking to Von Miller, at this time last year, he ha already had nine sacks. He finished with 17. And this year to have none, people are saying, what's going on? Well, a high ankle sprain, big deal. and that's not an excuse, but it's plus the fact, as you said, so many people are looking for him, Ed. Yeah, you have 17 sacks in one year. The next year, people are going to figure out how to scheme for you. A back, a tight end, whatever they have to do, they're going to put someone else over there to help their offensive tackle. Blitz coming, gets by it nicely, and the ball thrown on the run at the 40. Complete Adams, and Joe will step out at the 42. It's going to be a gain of nine, and it was Michael Hodges, number 37, who was applying the pressure. And I think Hodges uh, got a little over his toes. It's not exactly the most mobile quarterback in the world, maybe the tallest in Ryan Mallett and Hodges just got too far over his toes a nice job by Mallett of freezing him and bouncing outside so back to back first downs by the Razorbacks Niall Davis breaks the tackle breaks it up big down the sideline at the 20 it is going to be knocked out of bounds at the 12 yard line 45 yards and look for a block by Terrence Frederick, number seven. Well, you mentioned during the bye week them talking about running the ball more, and Niall Davis, 5'10", 220-pounder, has been a guy who started to get a lot more reps with the first team. A, a, high, a high tackle there by a &M. You go lower, you knock him out of bounds, but Niall Davis starting to separate himself some from that committee of running backs. Broderick Green now comes into the ball game at tailback. 
and he is probably what you call their short yardage guy. Tough runner, weighs 248 pounds, but he gets it as a flag goes down. Prior to the snap, delay of game, offense, five yard penalty, still first down. Well, that 40 second clock went fast. It didn't seem like it was running down. It did not. Not much time went by before Coach Petrino sent Ben Cleveland out on the field. They're going to go with two, maybe even three tight ends on this formation. But as they reset, that's exactly what they've got. Then Steuben, the fullback from the running play, nothing. Maybe a gain of one, and that's it. Well, Tim DeRuder, the first year defensive coordinator, came over from Air Force, obviously doing a nice job of getting his crew ready. That was a complete shift of the strength of the formation, and AM had all the time in the world to get their bodies over there so they weren't outnumbered. Good adjustment by AM. Second down and long. Niall Davis back in a tailback, but they'll throw it. And they've got it to Childs. And Childs first to the left and then back to the right, and he's inside the 10. It'll be third down, and they need the two yard line. Von Miller with his second tackle on this drive. Well, and this is, of course, Bobby Petrino calls his own plays, has ever since he's been a head coach. But it'll be interesting to see if Tim DeRuder is going to bring pressure here. I don't think you want Mallet standing in the pocket, so I would bring at least five so one extra blitzer and make Malik get this ball out of his hand sooner than he wants. And I'm sure blitz they stay at home. Pass right over the middle is caught. Touchdown Joe Adams. Well they Arkansas is has so much depth at wide receiver. Adams lined in the slot. Good move to the outside. He sticks his foot in the ground on Trent Hunter, the free safety. But that was a three-man rush, so nobody was in Mallet's face. Give Mallet credit where he placed the football. That safety was coming pell-mell. Yes, he, he threw it. it. That's right. If he led him to safety, probably would have knocked the ball down. Kick is up, and it's good. Hawker knocks it home, and he remains perfect. As you look at Mallet pacing the sideline, and that's a determined look on his face. This is the pass I'm talking about, just perfect. Well, I told you just after the tease uh, that we had on to begin the show, there are a lot of folks down here from uh, from a hog country. And they have been calling the hogs all morning long. In fact, they called them quite a bit last night at our hotel. And everybody is going to be coming back here for several more years. A 10 year deal for Texas A&M and Arkansas to play in this building. This is year two. So they are have a lot of fun visiting Arlington over the next eight years. Alex Tejada prepares to kick it off. He already has six touchbacks this season. This one is going to be returnable. Maybe a yard deep at the end zone to swoop. And he will take it to around the 23-yard line. So it gives us an opportunity to talk about Gerard Johnson, the senior out of Humble, Texas. Leads the Big 12 with 318 and a half passing yards a game. And that tough outing you were talking about uh, at the top of the show against Oklahoma State. Uh, in talking to the coaches and everyone around, the one thing this young man doesn't lack is confidence. And uh, his teammates rallied around him. They had a little extra prep time because that was a Thursday night game, and everyone thinks he's going to get over it rather quickly. And we're about to find out. Christian Michael will open the game at tailback. And they'll give it to him. He'll have seven on the play. That's Rudell Krim, the strong safety, coming up to make the tackle. Kristen Michael, very much like Niall Davis, 5'11, almost 220. Good power running there. Well, the Aggies going to run a little hurry up here. Flag comes down, and I don't know if the hurry up got somebody in too big a hurry, but I have a feeling this is going to go against Texas A&M. Kristen Michael, the ball carrier. Now against Oklahoma State, despite all of those turnovers, A&M ran 106 offensive snaps. So uh, they go very fast. Let me ask you something. 
<laughs> Coach talked with us about that. If they hadn't had all the turnovers, they might have had 130 snaps in that game. You know, it's unbelievable. Illegal shift on the offense. The players did not get set prior to the snap. Five yard penalty, second down. Tough mental error. Making it second and long, but well, no. both offenses have kind of started off the same way. But maybe the crowd is a lot tougher on them down there than maybe we thought. Prior to the snap, false start. 76 offense, five yard penalty, remain second down. Now it's Luke Jokel, left tackle. He is a true freshman. And uh, he, he's going up against one of the better fronts in the SEC. As a matter of fact, this defensive line for Arkansas leads the SEC with almost four sacks per game, so a little jumpy. He's from Arlington. You think maybe he's a little more hyper than, so, than yeah. everybody else for Texas A&M? I would imagine, only a freshman. Second down and 14. Pressure off the corner. Pass is caught. And out of bounds at the 30 yard line. Ryan Tannehill, who is the backup quarterback, is the wide receiver, is a deep punt return man, and also was a coach's kid. And I think the way he fell, he, he did. He picked up the first down. Good throw by Johnson over the coverage. Tannehill goes up and makes a great catch. What? That was a good read by Johnson. And uh, luckily for Tannehill, I'm not sure he knew where that uh, stick was, but because he fell back with some momentum, picked up the first down. Johnson will keep it on the ground and very short yardage. Time to look at a couple of more impact players, one from each team. You know, Jeff Fuller, I mentioned that uh, Texas A&M had 106 snaps on offense. He went every single one of them against Oklahoma State, unheard of for a wide receiver. And Jerry Franklin, if he leads the team in tackles again this year, he'll be the first hog since 1960 to do it three seasons in a row. Outstanding, 11 tackles two weeks ago against Alabama. Johnson, quick look in pass, got Fuller, blocker in front, and on what is called the jailbreak screen, he is going to be stopped uh, just short of the 40, and that's a nice job by Arkansas because one more block and that thing could have been into the wild blue yonder. Yeah, Darius Winston was in coverage and did a good job trailing because Fuller's running back towards the middle of the field. If he doesn't trail, I'm not sure that doesn't come out the backside and goes for a big game. Third down, line to make the 42. Cyrus Gray is the tailback. Johnson's going to run. Going to have the first down, plus about five more. And that's Anthony Leon, the senior out of Miami, who reaches out and gets an ankle to trip him up. Ed, how about your game plan for this one? Well, because of the youth up front for AM, I think they need to help in pass protection with running backs and tight ends. And for Arkansas, we've already seen Joko make a mental mistake. If they're going to bring pressure, I would test that true freshman at left tackle. Well, there's this going to be encroachment. I think it is. Alfred Davis got up and banged his hands together as if to say, my bad, because I really didn't see Patrick Lewis come out of a stance. Did you? No. Nope. That ball, offside. Number 70, 51, defense, five yard penalty, first down. I can tell you right now, Alfred Davis would not be a good poker player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better fake it. Don't ever admit immediately to the official, that was my bad. Alfred had a nice sack in that Georgia game on second down on their last drive. Of course, finished up by Beckett that forced him to punt, and then, of course, the touchdown to win it on the next drive. Tristan Michael, enough for the first down at the Arkansas 40 yard line. Wholesale changes for Arkansas defensively. Uh, and Michael, a young man that they have been working with on his patience for the hole to open up. He's such an explosive back. Good cut back to the inside, but he stayed on his track until the last minute. You want the back to get up onto his blockers before he cuts. Beckett back into the ball game and this run he is the man who makes the initial contact on Kristen Michael. 
Beckett will get credit for the tackle gain of three. Arkansas rolls through with three running backs Texas A&M basically with two Michael and Cyrus Gray right now it's been Michael the whole drive. This is the eighth play of the drive it started back at the 22 yard line and now Johnson with an audible. Short drop ball is tipped at the line of scrimmage he wanted Jeff Fuller. And Fuller was very closely guarded by Ruman Broadway. Well, Johnson wanted Fuller the whole way. He was running a five yard hitch, and his eyes stayed there the whole time and allowed Beckett, as soon as the defensive line, they're reading the eyes of the quarterback just like the secondary. And Beckett wisely got his hand up and knocked it down. You can't look that way the whole time. Third down. They need the 30. Swooped the intended receiver just a little too far in front of him, and it'll be a kicking situation for Texas A&M. Their first of the afternoon, the first for either team, as Ryan Apperson comes out to kick it away. He's a freshman out of Keller, Texas. Deep man, Joe Adams, the young fellow who scored the opening touchdown for the Arkansas Razorbacks on their first offensive series. Here's the booth. Taking a bounce, almost getting out of bounds, and it wouldn't quite make it. Let's take a timeout. 37 yards on the kick. Seven and a thing. Razorbacks lead it. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. AT&T. Rethink possible and Nissan proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. You know Ed, after looking uh, at this uh, billboard shot now I know why the crew took over three hours to shoot uh, this thing <laughs> yesterday had to get the lighting right by the way this thing is five times larger than the locker room that they had in the old stadium certainly an icon for this franchise the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders. Broderick Green comes into the lineup at tailback for Arkansas. Mallet on the opening series, four of four, 39 yards and a touchdown. Intercepted at the 35. That's Frederick. Frederick down the sideline and he will score. They're going to say out of bounds at the two yard line. I beg your pardon. Frederick the backside corner trailing on Childs and this is just a poorly thrown ball. I, I didn't see Mallet's arm get hit. I didn't see the ball get tipped. So uh, I'm not quite sure if he puts air on that ball. Childs had a step and Frederick undercut it. That was just a poor throw by Ryan Mallet. Looked similar to the interception he threw against Alabama in the fourth quarter the second of the three. So the Aggies have a first and goal at the two yard line. And the offensive coach is trying to make up their mind as to the player grouping, the personnel grouping that they want on the field. So let's take a timeout. Seven to nothing, Arkansas. Well, Ryan Mallett had an absolutely perfect pocket from which to throw and as he drops back you're going to see Childs coming across the screen with Frederick trailing and if he's going to throw this ball it's got to have air on it. he's got to throw it over the top of the coverage instead he drives the ball and under throws it Frederick cuts right underneath of it if he puts some air on that ball because the safety Trent Hunter had to chase on the other side Childs may have had a huge game instead of an interception well they roll the pocket and the pass thrown well over the outstretched arms of Christian Michael. Jermaine Thomas was the man with the cover but uh, the ball was thrown just way too far in the head. Frederick quite an interception for him. He was playing the eyes of the quarterback all the way. 
Second down and goal from the two. Michael straight ahead and this is Rudell Krim the strong safety who will get credit for the tackle it's a gain of about one yard it'll be third down and uh, Mike Sherman who like Bobby Petrino calls his own plays I would think Gerard Johnson even though he's a big quarterback is very mobile we've already seen the quarterback draw pick up a first down and now you have some bodies changing out you have the tight end Prelo coming in and Prelo. I would think is going to be a decoy over here to the left. I, I would think Johnson's going to roll to his right. I don't think this is a running down. Third and goal. Ball is thrown too high. It is fourth now. Lamoff, the intended receiver. And Jake Beckett with good pressure on the play. Well, they, there was really good coverage. They went to Prelo on that side. He was covered, and they couldn't get back to Lamoth quick enough. And now, I agree, I think you do go for it on fourth down here. This doesn't feel like it's going to be a field goal game. But for this one, I, I would want Johnson to move, and I think he's better to his right than to his left. Fourth down, Aggies will go for it. About a yard and a half from the end zone. Touchdown, Christian Michael. Michael Lamont, the tight end, with a really nice block on the play. Well, this is a two tight end set with a fullback. This is old school. Straight downhill running out of the eye formation. Good blocking at the point of attack. Bullock. Extra point has got it. It with 527 left in the opening quarter. A touchdown apiece as we go to break. One more look. Christian Michael, big hold on the right side. Aggies tie it up. So we are back in Arlington, Texas. Ron Franklin, along with Ed Cunningham. And we have seen so far just an even Steven match. There has been an interception. Ryan Mallett, after going four for four and throwing an absolutely perfect touchdown pass, uh, couldn't have thrown it any better. And then he comes up with an interception. So, and it cost him seven points. And now, if I'm the Aggies and Tim DeRuiter, their defense coordinator, I would bring a lot of pressure on this one. See if he's in his head a little bit after that tough outing against Alabama. Maybe get another one. Bullock with the kickoff. Joe Adams from the six. Spun off two tackles, not the third one, and he will barely make it to the 15. Well, tonight at ABC, the 23rd ranked Florida Seminoles take on the 13th ranked Miami Hurricanes. Some of the West Coast are going to see Southern California taking on Stanford. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines tonight on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Aggie show blitz, then they stay at home. Broderick Green across the 20, a gain of very close to six yards as Coriel Judy is there to make the tackle, the starting left cornerback. And what a difference a year makes for Texas A&M. Last year they were 105th in the country in total defense. In this ball game, they were up 10 0. Ryan Tannehill dropped what looked like a short touchdown, and Arkansas ran off 30 straight and, and impacted in. But this is just a different defensive bunch than what Arkansas saw last season. Here comes pressure. Now it runs away from it. Now scrambles and slides down at the 30 yard line. He will have the first down. Sean Porter with pressure on the quarterback, Ryan Mallett. You talked about a different group for Texas A&M. I can't help but think that every time I visit with Tim DeRuiter, the new defensive coordinator who came down from Air Force, his emotion and excitement is an infectious thing. Plus the fact the 3-4 defense, he knows very, very well. Now they're going to go deep. That one-on-one -on -one coverage. It is caught at the 20. And walking into the end zone is Hamilton. 71 yards.
personal foul, run from the passer, on the defense, penalty is good, the yardage is being forced on the kickoff. Mallet roughed after he got that pass away. And I mean, Kobe Hamilton, you talk about, you hear the expression, he simply walked in. <laughs> he did. He was like a stroll in the park in Texarkana, where he's from. Hawker to attempt the extra point. And he's got it. Nice job by Mallet buying some time in the pocket. He had eluded Demontre Moore, and this becomes one-on-one -on -one coverage. The safety had to roll to the other side, and Judy's in perfect condition, uh, position, but he goes to play the ball, and, and he was just, there's no way he could have done that. At that point, you have to make the choice because Hamilton, a big body guy at 6'3", 210 pounds, is Sheila G. You gotta go and play through the body. But that was an excellent job by Mallet of stepping up into the pocket. And uh, of course, Gerard Eddy hits him there late, but uh, a good avoid of the rush by Mallet to be able to find Hamilton down the field. Now, you saw the call after the play had been ruled a touchdown. There is a penalty now that will be stepped off on the kickoff, and rather from the 30 yard line, they're going to kick it off from what, the 45? Yep. And you know, some teams in this situation, you would think, oh, just load up your kicker and kick it, in, you know, through the end zone, but. A lot of times you might try a pooch down to about the five, see if you can't get bodies around there and pin Texas A&M inside their own 10. But for Ryan Mallett, a nice bounce back. He, he had a bad throw on the last drive. He comes back, shows some good mobility in the pocket, steps up. Of course, we know that he has a wonderful arm and, and uncorks one to Hamilton. So you could talk about short-term memory all you want. It's nice to get a plus play on the ledger. You know, it also twice in this ball game. He has had somebody coming on him very quickly and he just stepped aside mm -hmm. and the defender missed it. And that obviously was the key to picking up a 71 yard touchdown just a moment ago. This is Tejada and he'll kick a very high spinner and of course at the back of the end zone it will not be returned. Robert Flores let's uh, check with you in New York in an Alabama update. Thanks. I'll be here all afternoon getting you caught up on what's going on across the country, starting with this Taco Bell studio update. South Carolina has never beaten a number one team, but they are leading one today. Stephen Garcia to Marcus Lattimore has the number 19 South Carolina Gamecocks up 7-3. Michigan has kicked a field goal. They lead the Spartans 3-0 at the end of one. Robert, thank you. Our situation. 14 to 7. The Razorbacks on top following a 71 yard touchdown strike. Aggies, quick pass. That's Fuller right over the middle. Got to be good for about six yards, maybe seven. Jerry Franklin recording the tackle. And Jeff Fuller, who's now AM's all time leader in touchdown receptions, was challenged by his head coach, Mike Sherman, said, hey, you're you're the best receiver on our team, but you can be one of the best in the country. Told him he needed to run better routes, get in better shape, work better on his blocking, and he really dedicated himself. Of course, that showed itself in last week's ball game. Kristen Michael on the draw. Spins off a tackler, and with that, going to pick up the first down. It has about five more yards. Tremaine Thompson is a junior out of Winnie, Texas, played at East Chambers High School for main number five, the free safety. 26 Texans on this roster for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Johnson will keep it after the play action, and it's going to be very close to 10 yards on the running play by him. Brian Jones. You know, they brought Ryan Swope into the backfield. He's such a dynamic guy, played running back in high school. They've switched him to receiver, but you're not sure what the formation is. He's a wide receiver. He comes over to running back, and, and you're not quite sure what they're going to be able to do with it. Well, straight ahead with this running play. Good for one yard, and that's it. Arkansas is very active, interchanging those interior defensive linemen. Uh, DeQuinta Jones comes back into the lineup very quickly. 
They're trying to keep fresh faces in there. Also, Alfred Davis, number 51. Johnson, good protection. Throws it in the flat, and it is. Was it caught? No, they say incomplete. Nehemiah Hicks, the tight end, the intended receiver. Well, you were mentioning all the bodies coming in. Willie Robinson, the third year defensive coordinator, been here with Bobby Petrino. Good attempt, but of course, the ball hits the ground. But yeah. Willie Robinson is uh, the depth has gotten to a place where they finally feel comfortable being able to roll those bodies in. They couldn't do it the first year they were here. Shovel pass, and the ball is going to be incomplete. Boy, I'll tell you. That was thrown so hard that could have been tipped up and could have been intercepted, which normally those kind of passes are not. Yeah, I think DeQuinta Jones does a really nice job on the right guard. Watch him fight to the inside. He reads it, and it was just hard. Uh, Gerard Johnson could not feed it right to his running back because of Jones standing there. Third down and ten. Blitz coming from Arkansas. Johnson just going to throw it away. It'll be fourth down. Tenarius Wright with tremendous pressure. And Johnson has now missed on six of his last seven pass attempts. And, and a lot of it is because Arkansas rolling in those fresh bodies you were talking about has been able to get pressure on him. And that's really been the story. The only thing that's held this offense back for Mike Sherman is a lack of protection. They've given up 14 sacks in the first four ball games. Apperson gets a low pass and the kick off the side of his foot, but and now here comes a flag down. Gonna go out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Well, AM has really struggled in their punt game. Epperson. And Jaroszewski, Jared Jaroszewski have uh, switched back and forth, and uh, Mike Sherman has just not found who he can trust yet at punter. Of course, a bad snap didn't help. Well, Arkansas got to be penalized 15 yards for face mask. Yeah, I started to say first he had to play shortstop before he could punt it. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's take a look back at our Chick fil A drive recap. Yeah, the only ones who have hurt. Arkansas is themselves the bad throw by Mallet but a couple of good long drives they've mixed in the run they are perfect six run six pass balance which is something that uh, play caller will have to distance the goal on that penalty but Bobby Petrino said during the bye week we have to start getting the run game you know in that Georgia and Alabama game combined they only ran for 117 yards including four rushing yards in the fourth quarter against Alabama in a game that they led. And Petrino admitted, I, I kind of forgot about the run game because we trust our quarterback so much, but we've got to get that back in in those tight games in the fourth quarter so we can melt some clock. So they come to the line of scrimmage with a not very good field position. Ball resting at the 13 yard line. Davis breaks one tackle, then gang tackled as he gets across the 15. Ball is loose. The Aggies say they have it, but the official says no. He was down. Now, when you get around the ball, yeah, his forward progress is stopped. The ball did come out before he hit the ground, but I think that's the right call. Davis was stacked up. His forward progress had stopped. Good whistle by the officials. I think Mike Sherman is going to challenge this. Remember, if he wins the challenge, they will return his timeout. And even though there was a whistle in the immediate action after a fumble, if AM recovers it, they can get the ball. Well, that would be virtually not. impossible for the crew upstairs to determine. Yep. Forward progress being stopped. Looked Not impossible, but yeah. very tough. Well, I, th I think Sherman just wanted a clarification of what the down and distance was. Jerry is right.
Judy on the stop and he'll give him forward progress what appears to be the 32 yard line that's a gain of 13. What an unbelievable move by Jarius Wright after he made that catch on Trent Hunter. Dar Jarius Wright because they were really doubling up Alabama Joe Adams and also Greg Childs had a bit of a problem with an injury. Jarius Wright had over 100 yards in four catches against Alabama and was a huge motivator for them offensively in that ball game. Blitz coming off the corner. Throws it to the near flat. Kobe Hamilton. And Hamilton, who scored the last touchdown, being hit and shoved back about three yards by Judy. But here, you, you, to me, this is a freebie down for Arkansas. Second, let's call it right at about a yard, yard and a half. They've been running the ball well. Got 71 yards rushing. I think this is a play action, and you let your, your uh, junior quarterback with big arm see if he can't hit one. Well, they go straight up the middle. Big opening inside the 40. Broderick Green, and he'll have the first down, plus about 25 more. 24 total yards on the running play. I think AM did not align correctly on their defensive line. Watch the size of the gap to the left. The defensive end of that side was outside shoulder on the offensive tackle, and the nose guard was shaded back to the other side, leaving Garrick Williams on a huge island. I think that was a misalignment by the Aggies. So that is the end of the first quarter. 14 to 7 Arkansas, and the Razorbacks are driving. cheerleaders situation is their ball club is leading 14 to 7. We understand that uh, top ranked Alabama at the end of the first quarter is trailing South Carolina 14 to 3. This is the first of six straight conference opponents that they play that have the week off before they play them. You believe that? <laughs> now we got a flag down. <laughs> I, don't someone moved. Saban, I don't think Nick Saban believed it when he that saw ball, it. ball start 45 offense five yard penalty first down. So in the first quarter of play, AM got a break with the interception or made their break and then scored, tied this ball game at seven. But I mean Arkansas, regardless of where they've been on the field, they have not been deterred. They've stick been sticking with their guns. And I like to see Mallet after that bad throw come back and make a good throw down the field. And it seems like he's flushed that off the left point. He just threw what should have been a second interception, and Dustin Harris just dropped it. Boy, that is hard to figure yeah. how he can throw so well and then come back and. Well, this is something that they've fought with Ryan Mallett. The coaches have worked with. Remember, we had the bowl game last year against East Carolina, but when he gets out into space, he's getting hit as he's throwing, but he's back across his body. He's obviously a, he's a long body guy, and even though he's got Hodges draped on him, you can't throw that ball back to where you are and not put some zip on it. Mallet pressure on him gets it away and has it complete and that is Greg Childs first catch for Greg this afternoon I believe Von Miller applying the pressure actually it's the second catch by Greg Childs. Well the number that jumps off here for me is rushing yards for Arkansas coming into the game they were averaging 103 yards per game so obviously the bye week has done some good for that running game. Of course, it helps with Miles Davis and Broderick Green breaking off a couple of long ones. Yeah, you know, those two were good for 69 yards, and then the scramble by Mallet. Third down, they need to take it to the 26. Pressure again, and he's going to be sacked. And it's Von Miller. That is the first sack for him for the season. It came at the 14:08 mark of the second quarter of this game. Well, he is so quick and just trying to get healthy. With that bad angle, watch him run right to the inside of Ray Dominguez. He is, it, it's almost impossible when a guy is that quick not to have help on one side or the other. He led the nation last year with 17 sacks. 
And, and a lot of those sacks came when he beat guys to the inside. So what you have to do is give the tackle some help on the outside so he can trust that he can block the inside. Reading with the kick. And this is that knuckleball kick, and it's going to be caught. And I mean, you could hear the groan from the crowd at the eight yard line. That was McNeil. I'm not sure I'd try to catch that thing or not. Let's take a break. <laughs> Watching ESPN, new home of the Bowl Championship Series. <laughs> Aggies have the football deep in their own territory. In fact, this is the worst starting position that they would have had this afternoon. For Johnson, he opened the day two of two. Now Eddie has missed seven of his last eight throws. <laughs> Kristen Michael. Flag is down. And he almost broke that for 10 yards. It's going to be a gain of eight. And let's see if the play will stand. Well, here's a little decision time there, saying that it was encroachment by uh, the defense. You either get first and five or second and two and a half. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I, you, I think you flip a coin. I, I'm a big fan of first down, though. Offside on the defense, have penalties decline, second down. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing about Mike Sherman and visiting with him uh, this past week, when he was at Green Bay, he called his own plays. And he said, you know, in college, I don't want people to think I'm not a CEO coach. I want to be hands on. And, and he said the other thing, too, is it keeps him connected to his players. In practice, he has more personal interaction with his players when he's involved in the play call. Well, there's the first down. That's tough running by Kristen Michael. Kristen is uh, out of Beaumont, Texas, played at Westbrook. High school. Well, right, it's good to see Michael with his pads down, running hard through the hole, watching the film against Oklahoma State. A couple times where he tippy toed it up into the line. Right now, he's running really hard in what they say behind his pads. All his weights behind him. Middle linebackers faking a blitz, and now here they come. And Johnson will hold on to it and take it to the 30. Well, now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. And it is, what is the largest home stadium in the FBS? And what is the smallest? We'll give you the answer in just a few minutes. And we ask because we are, with standing room included, in the largest building in the NFL of just over 100 grand when they let a bunch of people in to stand on the concourses. Well, certainly an audible now when they looked up and saw Rudell Krim, the safety, coming up. With, with the blitz, he remains at the line of scrimmage, and now here he comes. And they're going to run right to that vacant spot, and the first down will be achieved. Well, this drives you crazy if you're Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator. You call it, AM sees it, and quite frankly, I'm not sure why they would audible into a quarterback run right into the blitz. You know, you took the time. You know, you saw Krim came down. You mentioned it, and they audibled right to it. And for Willie Robinson, you got to go nuts and say, "I called it perfect." They ran right into it. We didn't make the play. Yeah, but see, they're not watching the telecast. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> going to lob this one in the air against single coverage, and it'll be incomplete. Jeff Fuller was the man that they wanted out there. Isaac Madison had the cover. Well, and this is one you'd like to see your quarterback take some air off it and under throw it because Fuller did not have a step on Madison and uh, you can if you throw this behind him and flat that gives your offensive player time to stop come through the defender and make it and the defender may have to interfere with your receiver so you're going to get something positive out of it hopefully and nine times out of ten in man coverage that defensive back has his back to the line of scrimmage that's the reason the underthrown pass is the best option Cyrus Gray in the game of tailback and he'll be stopped for a two yard loss Jake Beckett making the tackle Jake Beckett a tremendous story as far as I'm concerned for college athletics graduated in two and a half years he is a four point student in finance folks his uh, he is a family Arkansas Razorback his granddad played at Arkansas his father played and also his uncle 
Very, very exemplary young man. Now, this is a call that will be interesting because Demario Ambrose was in the neutral zone before the Texas A&M player moved. Ball, offside, yep, number 58 right defense, got in the neutral zone, yep. calls it a false start. Five-yard penalty, third down. This is a rule that was changed several years ago that the offensive lineman on either side of a defender that goes in, either the guy head up or on either side of that gap, if he moves after the defender goes into the neutral zone, that's a defensive penalty. Good call by this officiating crew, the correct call. Now third down at about six and a half. Blitz coming up the middle. Johnson steps up and this one is thrown off the mark. Diving to make the catch, but he simply could not get out to get it. That ball just came out awfully funny out of it. It did. Yeah, and then the receiver started falling. Kendrick McNeil started falling, but right now Gerard Johnson you go all the way back to that game against Texas last year. He, he just seems like he's thinking too much. He, he doesn't seem like he's in the flow of the game. Go at it. Apperson got it away. Boy, that was a lot of pressure. Bear catch is called for by Joe Adams, and he makes it. Take a timeout. 14 to 7, Arkansas on top. College football on ABC. Brought to you by Nissan. Proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. Ally. Do you love your bank? Learn more at AllyBank.com. And Verizon Wireless. Introducing the Droid X, the next generation of duds. Well, now that is to Canada. The Yankees fire when they score. It's a 1902 version. And they fired it yesterday, and they decided it is too loud to have it go off every time they score. So they fired it when the team came out for the first quarter. They will fire it at the beginning of the third quarter. But beyond that, it will not be shot again during the ball game. A quarter of the normal load of gunpowder uh, didn't sound like it to me when they were practicing. <laughs> well, Broderick Green kind of weaves his way out for a two-yard game. I tell you, Arkansas really has stuck with their guns about the running game, though. Now, obviously, they have done mightily well as far as the pass because both touchdowns have come by air, but they have run the ball virtually on every first down, haven't they? Mm -hmm. Short pass over the middle. Well, let's take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. Well, and it's both the bad and the good of Ryan Mallett. Under throws a ball that he doesn't get enough air on. Intercepted and almost returned for a touchdown by Frederick, but then a nice job avoiding the rush. And he finds Kobe Hamilton one-on-one -on -one down the field against Coriel Judy for a long touchdown. Third down, quick out pass is caught. And the tackle is going to be made not before he crosses the 40 yard line Greg Childs and that'll be plenty enough for the Arkansas first down. You know, I the thing that Ed has talked about and I noticed so much in the game against Alabama when you give him that kind of time to throw with guys like Childs with Joe Adams and also Jarius Wright folks it turns into a game of just pitch and catch. It's simple for them. You got to make him move. Green. Still feet and he'll have the first down a gain of about 11 yards Michael Hodges defensively Robert Flores in New York I understand you got an update on Alabama that's right Ron New York Life studio update has the number one team in the nation on the rope Stephen Garcia three touchdowns two of them to this guy Alshon Jeffrey South Carolina leads 21 to 3 but the Crimson Tide are driving TCU not too far from the Metroplex or in the Metroplex actually leading Wyoming 28 to nothing second quarter run. Robert thank you so much while we were away there was a flag across the way that we were obscured from and a five yard no not a five yard penalty ten yard, ten yard from the spot it was holding against D.J. Williams the tight end Boy, that's huge that's a 21 yard penalty because he had picked up 11 yards and they bring it back 
from the previous spot and penalize him 10. Here's pressure. Ball is delivered and incomplete as D.J. Williams just took his eye off yeah. the football. Man, you don't expect this from a guy like Williams, a senior. At six catches in the Georgia game, you go back to 2008, 61 receptions. But uh, you get a penalty, and a lot of times you get in your head. You know, you're beating yourself up from the play before, and that's one of those you got you let a bad play become two bad plays. Well, DJ is the leading active tight end in the NCAA. 117 catches in his career. Pass over the middle, and they got this one. I have a feeling, and I hope he did. He went back to the huddle and said, uh, "Do we try right, to we'll just do it again here? I'm not going to drop any more. Just throw it to me. I'll show you." Well, and a good job by Mallet, getting something positive so you can get into. I don't want to say a manageable third down, but it's not third and 20. You now get to a third and 13. Now for AM, what you have to be careful about is the crossing routes. Anything at 10 yards, you've got to be aware of. And also keep an eye on Devontre Moore, number 94, outside in the right. He is their rush specialist, and the ball thrown from a screen pass, and Wingo just kind of nonchalantly touched it. That ball was almost tipped into the hands of the defender. Wow. Really good pass rush by Texas A&M. Von Miller, uh, that ankle looks pretty good to me, but and, and you had mentioned Devontae, Devontae Moore was right there. That's one I think you throw at the feet of your running back. Don't take a chance of a turnover at that position. Breeding standing in to punt. And here's his boot. This is a dandy. Great coverage kick. And he's going to run away from it. Can Arkansas get to it? No. Very, very close. McNeil ran away from it, and wisely so. That is a 60-yard punt. 14 to 7 as we take a timeout. Still the Hogs. Well, time now to answer our AFLAC trivia question. What is the largest home stadium in the FBS? And what is the smallest? Well, the largest. Is Michigan Stadium 109,901, and the smallest is the Kibbe Dome. That's in Idaho, 16,000. Well, in this building we were talking about the largest in the NFL. When you add in the standing room only, of course, FedEx Field, where the Redskins play, has more seats, but they can fit more bodies in this building. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, a lot, that's a lot of T-shirts right there. <laughs> Make sure all the seats are lined up properly. Rod Johnson hands it off after faking the throw, and it's uh, Kristen Michael puts a head down and buries himself into the defensive back, and it'll be a gain of six yards to Quinta Jones defensively for the Razorbacks. Yeah, and for Gerard Johnson, just three really tough ball games in a row. It's three of 12 today, but he's had nine turnovers in the last two ball games. Of course. It's Florida International. He had four interceptions in four straight series. And I, I know he's trying to do a lot, but I think he's pressing a little too much. Tannehill is in the ball game. Wide receiver to the left. And they throw a look in to the other side, and that's complete to Fuller. Ball is loose. Arkansas says they have it, and the officials, we wait for agreement from them. It is Arkansas football. Well, he just let that ball get away from him there. Fuller's key. Runs a nice route, sits down, but never really tucks it away. And that was a nice finish on the play by Broadway. Elton Ford is just right there, the benefactor. Excuse me, that was not Broadway. That was. Uh, Middle linebacker. Yeah, it's Greg Gatson, mm -hmm. a cornerback, who came in and make, made the hit. But that that shouldn't cause a fumble. That's also, the entire play is under further review. Uh, I also thought that uh, Jerry Franklin. Yep, Jerry was, Franklin uh, was there. right there yep. as usual in the vicinity, making the hit. But that that hit by Gatson should not cause a fumble. It never. If you watch Fuller, he never tucks the ball away. He keeps it. In between his two hands, and that's just sloppy ball. You see receivers all the time when they're practicing; they catch it and immediately tuck it underneath one or the other arms. That time, 
Fuller caught it, started running with it out in front of him, and then as he went to tuck it, he was tucking it late when the cornerback came to hit. But that's just something you've got to clean up because uh, that's not a hard enough hit to cause a fumble if you have proper ball control after the reception. So the situation as they review the play, and here comes the result. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It was a fumble. First down. So the situation, we have 7.06 to play until halftime. Arkansas with a 14-7 lead. And to add a score right here, a ton of momentum they could go in with at halftime. And yeah, A&M is just playing with fire. I mean, I know Mallet's thrown an interception. You've made a couple of plays on balls. But A&M's offense is just not helping out this defense at all. And they're, they're going to get... We're going to get burned here. Dead ball, false start, 65 offense, five yard penalty, first down. Well, now that, that's difficult because uh, DeMarcus Love is a senior and was described by his head coach yesterday as a leader for three years on that offensive front. Eight penalties against Arkansas in the first half for a total of 53 yards. Niall Davis. Well, millions of people watched the family go from ordinary to extraordinary. And the adventure is just beginning. ABC's No Ordinary Family, all Tuesday, all new at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock Central. Arkansas with a second down and 13 from the Aggie 40 yard line. They lead by a touchdown. Aggies with six men at the line of scrimmage. They bring the pressure and the pass thrown in the flat. That's Hamilton. And he makes the catch. It'll now be third down. And they still need, I believe, about seven yards for the first down. And that was a good read by Ryan Mallett. One of the things that the coaches have been working on is his adjustments to pressure. That time AM had five, or excuse me, six players up around the line of scrimmage, but he knew he could not block the outside linebacker and threw a quick one to Hamilton. Empty backfield. Mallet with five wide receivers. Here comes pressure, and they throw the jailbreak break screen into the middle. Pass is caught, and then Hamilton spins back to the outside, and he got spun after he did the spinning. It's going to be a fourth down. And all right, let's see. I remember that the head coach said he would go from as far as what 53 yards on a field goal attempt. Yeah, this by is Hawker. Yep. And this is uh, right where it is. This is right on the edge of Hawker's range. I think what we're going to say here is about 49 yards rather than 50, not quite to the 40. 49 yard attempt. Hawker is perfect on the year. Four of four. 248 yarders already. Good pass. He's got the distance. No, he doesn't. It is going to be short and wide to the right. The first miss of the season for Zach Hawker. Let's take a timeout. Score remains 14 7 Arkansas. This is ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Well, this is uh, Coach Petrino in between plays during the timeout. And now remember, this is an SEC crew, but he has given them what for on all the penalties that have been thrown on movement by the offensive line. And I think because a and going back on offense, he was talking about the offensive tackles for a and moving their outside foot before the snap. See if he gets a call. Well, the blitz came off the corner. And this running play by Michael is maybe a yard, and that's it. Tackle made by Jerry Franklin, the middle linebacker. But AM has dodged so many of their own mistakes. And uh, the fact that they did not are only down 14 to 7 is quite frankly unbelievable. It feels like it should be 21 or 28 to 7 right now. 
Cyrus Gray in the ball game, and he lines up at wide receiver. Pass tipped, and then the ball hit the Arkansas defender in the headgear. Wow. Jerry Franklin was right there, and who was that behind him? Was that Jericho Nelson? Yeah. Well, this, this Aggie offense. And, and let's not take away from Arkansas defensively Arkansas is much better than they were last year just like we were talking about the Aggies but uh, they're just continuing to harm themselves. Willie Robinson is going to say to Jericho I want you to use your head but son next time catch that football. <laughs> Arkansas shows blitz high pass Johnson does a smart thing but he did not cover the football up altogether. Now was he going to lose this. It was around his legs and he had not reached down to pick it up. Arkansas has the football. Tremaine Thomas will get credit for the fumble recovery yeah, and Mike Sherman it. can only look toward the ground. Demario Ambrose is the man who came in. Ball goes right between, between his legs. Matt Allen short arms it and and Gerard Johnson I, I'm not so sure Johnson didn't injure his right arm when he fell down it looked awkward the way he landed on that arm and was not able to bring the ball in Ambrose is the man who totally took his body away from the football that's a good defensive play I, I think that Gerard Johnson may have injured his right arm I, he, he landed well he not going for attention but it's a poor job of recovering the ball. Davis Nile Davis is going to have a gain of three he'll take it inside the 20 yard line and the smart thing that Arkansas is doing right here we still have four minutes right now left in this half. you actually could help yourself not only by scoring but scoring after you have used every available moment on that clock not giving the Aggies an opportunity to get back out with another play for the half. Green, Roderick Green will take it inside the 15. Terrell on the tackle. And coming up, the Cooper Tires halftime report. Third down. And we have not seen pressure from AM consistently on third down. But you mentioned earlier, I would not want Mallet just being able to stand in the pocket right now and pick up a receiver. Wow. <laughs> Both of these offenses just can't get out of their own way, can they? Dead ball. False start. 71. Offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. This, doesn't this feel like a first game? Uh, we're just I'll all the, the little the, mistakes. The Arkansas and, coaches, you know, I mean, they're, they're throwing their hands in the air. It's like, you know, we know better than this. We coach them better than this. And for some reason, both ball clubs uh, have made so many offensive mistakes today. So now it's third down and nine. Mallet throws it back, and it's incomplete. Broderick Green, the intended receiver, and the dangerous thing right there, that came very close to being a backwards pass, which you could pick up and run with. And, and another dangerous throw by Mallet. As he was scrambling up in the pocket, he never went back and looked to, to Green until he was ready to throw it. If the coverage had rolled over that could have been a pick six easily. Zach Hocker who missed a 49 yarder just a moment ago about to attempt a 37 yarder. He's four of five on the season. And it's going to be a fake. The ball is on the ground and it's recovered by Texas a and And it's Frederick who makes the recovery. I'm not sure why you fake that. Just kick the ball. You, you, the way AM is playing offensively, there's just no reason to do that. Take the points, make it 17 7. Flipping it over the shoulder. Austin Tucker, flip an update again on the Crimson Tide. That's right, Ron. Number one, Alabama. Number one in the polls for school record eight straight polls. They're losing here, though, to South Carolina. Greg McElroy does find Julio Jones for an eight yard score, but they miss the PAT. Gamecock still leading 21 9, less than 30 seconds to play in the first half. Okay, Robert. 
First and ten, Arkansas pumped it. Now he's going to run with it. And he will be tackled after a gain of only one. That's uh, Gerard Eddy on the tackle. You know, I really think that's the way I would play Alabama. I'd put up eight men in the box and say, beat me passing McElroy, but I'm not going to let those running backs gain 300 <laughs> yards yeah, today. We, we've seen what those two guys can do when given some space. Pressure off the wings. Gets it out. Safety bag. Wingo inside the 35. That's enough for the Arkansas first down. And the clock will stop momentarily with 1-12 left in the hand. And, and with those three timeouts, you just have to be careful if you're Arkansas that, that something across the middle short of the sticks, don't let that time burn. Use a timeout if it's not going to stop. There's no reason with three to let it burn. Far side line, the ball is caught inside the 10 by Greg Childs. Well, this is this is where people get so excited about Ryan Mallett. Watch Vaughn. the top receiver, and that's Dustin Harris in coverage, and he just buzzes it right over his head. And uh, Von Miller is shaken up Man. badly. But what a nice job by Greg Childs. They have such good height at receiver. And that's a 6'3", uh, Greg Childs going over a six-foot Dustin Harris. Now you can see he is holding it would appear his uh, his right leg. Vaughn decided to come back led the nation in uh, sacks last year with 17. He and his dad came and they visited with the head coach Mike Sherman and uh, and Mike said OK with my experience in the NFL here's what I will tell you. You're one dimensional. You are very good at rushing the passer but you need to add more to your resume as far as being a four or a three four uh, linebacker. Yeah he's just not big enough to play every down in the NFL at defensive end and of course it helped him to Reuter came in the defensive coordinator. They were in a four three he kind of played a little hybrid end outside linebacker but in the three four he's shown that he can move drop into coverage and uh, I, I think really improved his stock in exactly that area becoming a more well rounded outside linebacker for the next level. Yeah. Yeah there he was to the right of your screen looked like it might have been a cramp. First down pass for the end zone wide open touchdown Ben Cleveland. Keeping the touchdown close to campus. Ben is from Springdale. 6-4 tight end, 256 pounds. Well, he just absolutely unseen by Sean Porter or the middle linebacker Garrick Williams. Both of them suck up thinking run, but you just have to know what your responsibility is. That's an easy touchdown for Arkansas. Hocker to attempt the extra point. He's got it. Still perfect in extra points. So let's take a timeout. Short one, 30 second break. We'll be right back. So we're back with 53 seconds left in the first half. 21 to 7 now, Arkansas on top. Tannehill paces the sidelines. Of course, you know he is the backup quarterback and also wide receiver and the deep return man. And you know I've often said that in the Big 12 Conference if I were picking an all conference team of sons of coaches he'd be my first selection. I mean this kid can do everything and you have to wonder with the kind of day that Johnson is having would Mike Sherman even contemplate putting him in the ball game. This one returnable. This is Gray. Gray at the 35 and then gets out of bounds so they've got 44 seconds left and two timeouts and you've got a senior quarterback I agree that it'll be interesting to see if Tannehill may not get a little time if uh, Johnson doesn't start playing better but right now at 21 to 7 44 seconds and two timeouts Mike Sherman has to think eventually I've got to get something out of Johnson 
Here's a guy who played so well for us last year, set just about every single season record. And with, with this type of situation, we've got to see something. We've got to at least get in the field goal. Range. There was a time last year when Johnson threw 242 passes without an interception. And just for some reason, for two games, he winds up with eight interceptions mm -hmm. this season. Really strange. Throws for the far sideline. And the ball is going to be incomplete, but there will be pass interference call. Jeff Fuller is the man that he wanted, and Darius Winston, a bit undersized at six feet 185, and Fuller is 6'4", 220. Well, Winston is just a sophomore, but he has to eventually come and find the ball. There is no such thing as face guarding in college football, but the reason that they get him for interference is he never looks back to fight if he if he turns and goes and tries to catch that ball pass interference number 21 defense 15 yards previous spot automatic first down they would not call that and, and because he never saw it he could never make the adjustment so that when fuller went to adjust to it he had to try to run through him again an empty backfield five wide receivers Blitz off the corner. Pass thrown complete. Swoop hit immediately and knocked out of bounds at the 43. Uh, now you're out at the 43-yard uh, line. So you're looking. You need to get the 25-yard line is where they feel Randy Bullock, their kicker, is 100%. So you're looking at 18 yards. And I would think with 33 seconds and two timeouts, Work the sideline, maybe save those timeouts. But if you can get down into the 25 range with enough time, because I think you need seven here instead of three. Johnson steps up, going to run it, has the first down, and a lot more at the 30. And very wisely heads directly for the sideline with Thomas in hot pursuit. That is a gain of 13 yards. Tenarius right with some huge pressure. Yeah, you're not quite in field goal range, so think about a draw or a screen to get yourself inside. They're, they they kick it here, but they're going to be more comfortable inside the 25. So a draw or a screen, I think you pick up six, seven, and then I think that's going to give you two, maybe three shots into the end zone. And with the timeouts, you don't even have to throw it into the end zone at that point. Johnson safety bow and because the ball was lofted the defender there is so much speed in that Arkansas defense right is timeout. the man trying to defend it oh what bad what a bad job by Texas A&M uh, Gerard Johnson was just lost Mike Sherman was screaming for a timeout that took almost five seconds to get that clock killed so 11 seconds on the clock you know, you, you have to allot between five and seven seconds per play. So you figure you're going to get one, maybe, maybe two more plays. But of course, you, you, you cannot risk. They're going to put some time back on the clock. The, the one thing, and he was trying to feather the pass, but he threw it so high and it took so long to come down, it allowed the defenders to be all over the back who caught it. And I'm not suggesting that you just burn him up with a with a red hot pass, but a little bit quicker because you've got a team that runs so well east and west. Yeah. Arkansas is just that. And they got a little lucky that Jerry Franklin missed that tackle, a guy who doesn't miss a bunch <laughs> of tackles. But I, this is the right uh, putting the clock back three seconds is correct because Mike Sherman was calling timeout, and of course in college football you can get a timeout from the sideline. But uh, you, I, I don't think you're comfortable yet with the field goal kicker. So second down and 11. 14 seconds left until halftime. Arkansas 21 to 7. Timeout, Arkansas. Good timeout by Bobby Petrino and his staff. You saw exactly what they were going to do. Never hurts to call a timeout. You've got him right on the edge of field goal range. 
And uh, you know if you can get out of here without them uh, getting any points that would be a huge win for Arkansas. Obviously. And watching that discussion in the huddle I'm not so sure because the players all looked at one another in the secondary. I'm not so sure that somebody in the Arkansas secondary was not confused. That's the reason they called the timeout. <laughs> yeah, very see, very yeah, wisely. You see confusion at all you've got three timeouts. There is no reason to blow a coverage at this point. Now I would for Texas A&M. Your quarterback is struggling, you know, and you just have to be realistic about that. But he runs the ball well. To me, this feels like if you get the right front, a quarterback draw. I just think you've got to get down three points going in 21 to 10 is so important. I, I just think quarterback draws the play here. Johnson. Steps up, throws far sideline. He's got single coverage out there. Touchdown, Jeff Fuller. And give credit to that very young Texas A&M offensive line. They gave him the extra time that he needed because Fuller that's a long developing play quite frankly. Extra point is up and good by Bullock. Well watch what Jeff Fuller does here where he slows down a touch as the ball is in the air and as Winston turns watch the gear right there. As soon as Winston turned, he never caught the ball. I mean, he never found the football. No, and, and remember, it was Winston who got called for the pass interference where he didn't turn before. And this time he got caught peeking. Great protection, as you mentioned. But Fuller, you, you teach receivers all the time. And this is one thing that Mike Sherman talked with Fuller and his dad, Jeff Fuller Sr., who's a former Aggie about during the offseason. You need to be a better route runner. That there, I know it's a nuanced thing. But on a go route, you don't want to run full speed until the ball is in the air. The defensive back feels like, okay, I'm stride for stride. I can go peak it. As soon as he goes to peak, you accelerate to run under the ball. And he got great distance between himself and Winston on that touchdown. For all the Aggie uh, followers that, that are watching this ball game, uh, I say good for Gerard Johnson because he had had he completed his first two passes of the ball game today and since then he has had a very rugged run that right there just before halftime may be exactly what was needed to get his head right well and your and your best overall receiver fuller came through ran a really nice route he threw a good ball he got good protection something positive let's not forget a and m gets the ball back to start the second half this one's on the ground and picked up at the 25 yard line. And the return as they continue to stretch it out is going to take us, I believe, to halftime. Well, the special teams still kind of conversing with each other out on the field. And now everybody heads for their respective locker rooms. Van Steumann is the man who took the kickoff and got it back to just across the 40 yard line. But for Jeff Fuller and uh, Gerard Johnson, a huge, huge makeup of what had not been going right in the first day. Take a timeout as you look at the Aggies in Arkansas headed for the locker room. 21 14, our halftime score, Arkansas. All right. This is the stadium that we are in looking back across the way at the ballpark in Arlington and that's where the Rangers are playing right now against Tampa Bay and the Rangers with a two nothing lead they win today. Uh, they're going to play themselves uh, for a championship in the American League and they are on their ear in this part of the world to see that happen. And in the first half I know one thing that Bobby Petrino talked about at halftime. 10 penalties against Arkansas that equals a game high for the year but only 10 in the first half and they haven't taken advantage of turnovers two turnovers for Texas A&M zero points off of them for for Arkansas so I, I mean if I'm Arkansas I've got to be feeling like how are we not up 28 35 to 14 or maybe even more and for Texas A&M they have just got to hope that their senior quarterback with that last throw the touchdown to Fuller 
got him back into the mode, a little out of his head. Got a little better protection there on that drive. They've got to continue with that. So a, a change on the kickoff team for the Arkansas Razorbacks. The officials look on. There's a, you can see. Player running out at the uh, last moment is uh, that's Herndon, I believe. I'm not quite sure why the A&M coaches are. I would Dustin have to be a Kane, little. Okay. Up, I'd be a little upset right now that they got this much time to filter people on and off the field. Tahada prepares to kick it off. And this will come down at the goal line to Gray. At the 30, tries to hurdle the defender and gets turned to flip to the 33. Let's take a look now at our first half stats brought to you by Pacific Life. Well, we meant you mentioned the penalties with 10. But uh, the, the thing that jumped off for me is those turnovers uh, for Texas AM2 gave up zero points and, and those were on the plus side of the field as well. So, uh, and, and yards after catch, this is one thing that Arkansas is very, very good with. Uh, in talking to their coaches, all of their receivers are very good after the catch, but Joe Adams, specifically, who leads the country in yards poor per catch, is very good. Here are the defensive leaders from the first half. Leon, a guy who uh, was switched from safety to linebacker during camp, and Beckett, you mentioned how good he's been, already has his degree. Terrence Frederick with that interception on the underthrown ball, and Von Miller, let's see his health. Remember, it looked like he got cramps. Johnson's throw, and uh, Swope was the closest man to it, but uh, I couldn't tell if he was throwing it away or, uh, or it got bumped as he was throwing it. Third down, they got to take it out to the 43 yard line. <laughs> Offense or defense? Uh, it looked like defense to me. I don't mm -hmm. think anybody moved. You can see. <laughs> Dead ball, ball start, 71, offense. Five yard penalty, still third down. They get uh, Brian Thomas, the right tackle. I, I didn't see, I didn't see any movement on the line of scrimmage, but that that really looked to me like that was uh, the nose guard. And now, of course, Mike Sherman having to dial up a different play for third and eleven. Third down, they got to take it out to the 43 yard line. Blitz coming up the middle, picked up nicely, and the ball is thrown to nobody. I don't know if he had an audible, and he was expecting uh, Fuller to break off the route, but he certainly didn't, and the ball just fell helplessly on the turf, or harmlessly on the turf. And what a shame. For Texas A&M because they had the coverage that you'd want if you're going to throw that long stop route you have exactly what you want one on one coverage out there and Fuller must not have gotten the message. This is best coverage kick of the day and uh, Joe Adams with the fair catch will have it just across the 25 yard line. Epperson with a nice job. So Arkansas takes it over first down. At a pretty good field position, they're on 26, and we'll see what Mallet uh, can do. Final score in the Big 12 Conference in quite a slugfest, played just a few miles from here. Uh, Baylor defeated by Texas Tech, 45 to 38. 
the Metroplex has a total of five college games being played today. Nile Davis. That is a good, tough, open field tackle by Frederick. Frederick already has an interception in the ball game, and the junior out of Katy, Texas, came up and did a nice job of one on one. He's a returning starter. And Von Miller, happy to report for Aggie Faithful, is uh, in on this very first sequence, number 40, on the right side. Blitz coming off the top of your screen, and the ball is thrown right there. And it's going to be short of the first down. It'll be third down and two. Jarius Wright on the receiving end. Another good read by Ryan Mallett that time. We saw him earlier in the ball game against the Blitz to that side. Where the receiver cut off his route and he threw it right away to get yourself to third and one. Now let's see how true they are to this. We're going to run the ball thing they were talking about during their bye week. DJ Williams and Ben Cleveland in the ball game at tight end, along with Broderick Green. Green will get it, puts a head down, and he'll have the first down plus four yards. Sean Porter defensively. First down. And let's uh, check back in New York. Robert Flores, an update again in Alabama, understand. Yeah, Ron, here come the Crimson Tide down 21-9 at the half. First play, second half. Snap goes over the head of Steven Garcia. He throws it out of the back of the end zone. That's a safety. They've tacked on a field goal. They're down seven. Oregon leads Washington State 8-7. Kick returner Kenyon Barner has been taken off the field via ambulance so after being down, injured. They go with the running play and knifing through was number 40 Von Miller who got inside the blocker again to tackle Green. He, he is so quick and so good with his hands. You know he reminds me of a guy who used to play for the Dallas Cowboys Charles Haley. Look how quickly he jumps inside of that block by DJ Williams. But Haley had that ability to turn his shoulders and hit about 240 pounds. You'd blink and you'd miss him because he was so quick. Mallet's throw caught at the 45 by Hamilton. And Kobe Hamilton is going to be close to the first down. They say officially they spot it down a nine yard gain. Dustin Harris was there to make the stop. Hamilton, a guy who's trying to work himself into that mix with Adams Wright and Child. Rolls it and throws it. DJ Williams and the big tight end will rumble down to the 40 yard line. They only needed one yard <laughs> and they picked up 10 more beyond that. Williams a guy who lost some weight. He'd gotten himself up to 250 plus pounds last year trying to improve his blocking but uh, lost a little bit of weight. Nice job that time went down low and caught a lot of guys would fall and cradle that but went down with his hands caught it and was able to pick up more yards after the catch because of that. This is Niall Davis. And Davis is going to go for three. Sean Porter got an arm out and tripped him up. Well, you're, you're getting the sense that Niall Davis is the guy that they're going to go with. You know, we asked the coaches about the running back for by committee for Arkansas. They said, no, we're still going to mix those guys in. We have seen Broderick Green. We've seen Wingo, who's very good out of the backfield as a receiver. But starting to look like number seven is the guy that they're going to hang their hat on as this season goes forward. Interesting. He weighs 220, but yet he still can be a knifing kind of runner. And defensive play made by the umpire. Uh, just a tough spot. Of course, they had toyed with the idea where the umpire would be moved. And this umpire is Casey Moreland, where he would be moved right there in the middle of your screen to the backfield. And they're just he just can't get out of the way. And, uh, not his fault. That's exactly where he's going to be lined up and uh, very difficult position. That, but all of the umpires, most of the umpires around the country said we can't see what we have to see to do our job if you move us behind the offense. So they stayed right where they were. Ninth play of the drive coming up. Vaughn Miller with the pressure and the ball in and out of the hands of D.J. Williams. Arkansas wanted a pass interference call as Garrick Williams was covering on D.J. Williams. Really nice coverage 
by Garrick Williams. Williams, a former tight end, was moved to outside linebacker. Now that he's moved to that inside linebacker spot in the 3 4. Excellent coverage, and after a long drive, was at 10 plays, they get a stop. The last punt this young man had, breeding, was 60 yards. And this one, he's trying to kick the knuckleball. Look at this thing, turning over like a kickoff. And the catch made by McNeil. We'll take a timeout. Score runs 21 14, Arkansas. 21 to 14 to score, and we want to show you something. Both teams have a punter who will do this. I call it just simply an ugly punt. Watch the ball drop by Breeding. Look at the point is where he's going to kick the ball. Now, he's not looking for distance. He's looking for a knuckleball that won't go that far, but is really tough to catch. And that one, as you noted, was spinning like a Perfect. kickoff. Yeah, perfectly. The idea being get a little bit of backspin like on a kickoff, so if it drops, on the 10, it's more likely to come backwards than it is to squirt into the end zone. <laughs> that is quite a weapon. I would imagine it hurts too. <laughs> From the 10 yard line, quick out pass, and Johnson obviously just threw it away. He saw the coverage coming up very quickly on his uh, running back, Kristen Michael. That was a nice job by Tenarius Wright, the defensive mm -hmm. end to that side. He saw the running back going. That's tough for a defensive end to ask them to cover into the flat, but uh, that was a nice job by Wright. You know, one of the things I wrote down yesterday that Willie uh, Robinson, the defensive coordinator, told us, he said he is very, very fast for the position that he plays. This is Kristen Michael out to the 15, so it'll be a third down and about five, maybe just a little bit longer for the first down. Miles Nash, Colton Miles Nash is the man who took his feet out from under him. AM has just been horrific on third down, one for eight on conversions. If you can give him time, you got Fuller up top, maybe that stop route where they had miscommunication earlier. Prior to the snap, false start, 76, offense, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Well, they just continue to do things. That's Luke Jokel, the left tackle. He had one on the first play of the game. But You know, somebody's name we have not called today who has been very prominently mentioned in every game they play is Wachiku, yep. the wide receiver. Usually runs the deep ball. He's very fast. Arkansas showing blitz. And here they come. You can see bottom of the screen picked up nicely. Ball to Fuller. Got it. The race. 30. Tackle just inside the 25. Well, they had been picking on Darius Winston to that side. So Isaac Madison goes over. And Fuller just runs right by him. Watch the top of your screen. Well, Madison just got caught looking at the ball. It's almost exactly what we saw at the end of the half where the corner starts peaking and that receiver is gaining a yard or two with every step you're taking. That's a gain of 69 yards on that pass play. Great protection this time, and he throws safety valve to Fuller. Going to have a gain of one, maybe two. Ramon Broadway is out there to make the tackle. Now, that, that's a good matchup right there, although Broadway is only 5'9". He is well, a very tough player. It, and, and immediately Willie Robinson made the switch and put Broadway, said, you know what, I'm tired of seeing number eight run by us. You go over there and cover him. I like the switch. Throw Nehemiah Hicks, and now a flag comes up. I don't know if they are they going to call him for a late hit. A right, legal man downfield. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Well, there must have. You know what? They shifted their formation twice. Yeah, <laughs> it, and it, I think they confused <laughs> themselves. <laughs> and I thought it was unloading a subway in New York at 5 p.m. <laughs> now the question becomes: Do you want to accept this or not? Ineligible pass receiver downfield, number 45. He was covered up. Penalties declined. Third down. Covered up meaning that there was a receiver to the outside on the line of scrimmage. So Matt Sherman, the tight end, was ineligible. Hill comes back into the lineup, as does Bramble Jackson. Arkansas players asking for their crowd to stand up and make a lot of noise. I and mean, we are moving into the area that has the most Arkansas fans back to our right. It's where the band is as well. Johnson steps up, throws to the end zone, and it's going to be well overthrown. Well, this is just not. He, he, he had Tannehill, who was cutting out kind of a corner route there. But uh, Johnson has just not really been on the mark today. And that's a ball. That's a ball he should hit. You know, I'm sure not going to put. Going to beat the kid up, but that ball came out really strangely. Like, boop, it came out mm -hmm. high. It, it was high from the time it left his aim. It's going to be a 39 yard, 38 yard, let's call it, attempt. Plenty of distance, and he's got it. 21 to 17, our new score. College football on ABC brought to you by Cheese It because at Cheese It, real cheese matters. YP.com, click less, live more. And the Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Well, the Cowboys locker room, and of course, the, the stadium is open to the public during the week for tours. Tour stops include the press box, field access, and the Cowboys locker room. And a Cowboys Stadium tours average 50,000 a month. And what you can do is you can go in and put on shoulder pads, as you can see, and a headgear. I don't know about togs or not, but uh, anyway. But there's a, uh, a, a deluxe package where you actually go out and get tackled by a bunch of Cowboys, too. <laughs> you have to sign a waiver for that one. Joe Adams is the deep man as uh, Bullock, who just kicked the 38 yard field goal and kept the Aggies in this one, cutting the lead to four points. Is about to kick it off. This one's going to be returnable from the four yard line. Adams. Oh, Good heavens. You not only could hear it up here, you could almost feel the concussion. Wow. Well, and that's a good way to get your sideline going a little bit, too. Listen to this. Good low pad level head up. Good form tackle. It's nice to see, you know, young men not going high and leading with their head. That was just a good low hard tackle. Desmond Gardner is the man on the special teams who made the tackle. Mallet deep over the middle, and the ball is overthrown. And look. Wow. Next to him, at Jarius, right. Jarius White, yeah. and Jarius is turning around with his hands out, saying, "Wait a minute, I'm the guy that was wide open." Watch these two receivers as they go down the field, and watch Jarius Wright. Just—he's the inside receiver, just absolutely Look the at safety. Him yeah. I'm, and not only did Mallet miss read it, he missed through it too. Boy, that's an easy seven you missed. Davis. Jerry Jones 
Very interested in watching this one. And of course, for those of you who don't know, Jerry played his college football at uh, Arkansas. Obviously, very instrumental in putting together there this you. rivalry. And uh, he knows how important the state of Texas is to Arkansas's recruiting. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. You think? He's not going to pick up the first down on third down and one. Broderick Green just got stonewalled. You know, both of these offenses have just gotten in their own way. They seem like they're just out of sorts. As soon as they start getting something going, you know, missing a wide open Jarius right for a touchdown. Now you're in a position where they're going to bring the, uh, the sticks out to measure this, but he looked clearly short to me of the first down. But neither one of these offenses, which at times over the last couple of seasons have been so explosive, they just can't get out of their own way. Well, he's going to miss it uh, considerably. So breeding comes trotting on, and you would assume that Arkansas is going to punt, but <laughs> stranger things have happened. <laughs> well, but it is inside their own 30 yard line, though. The, the, the fake field goal, I think, was the last we're going to see of uh, any kicking game shenanigans today. It's Ben Cleveland, one of the tight ends that the head coach was talking with. Ball turned over. That was a nice kick, and then because it hung for so long, the uh, the Gunners were down there plenty of times to make the tackle immediately at the 24-yard line. Let's take a timeout. Four-point game. Arkansas continues to lead. Twenty-one to seventeen. Our score. Ron Franklin, along with Ed Cunningham, coming to you from uh, this beautiful arena in Arlington, Texas. Barry Switzer in attendance today. Not only the former head coach for Oklahoma and for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, Dirk Gruden up in the state of Arkansas. That Super Bowl ring, hard to hold that phone up and the ring at the same time. <laughs> Well, ball came loose, and Arkansas has recovered it as Christian Michael has the ball recovered by Rudell Prim, and that's three turnovers against the Aggies. And the one thing that that Mike Sherman said when we ended our phone call with him day before yesterday, he said, "Guys, you can't beat anybody when you have five turnovers, which is what they had last week." Yeah, and he just ran into his old man Fuller. I, a and M just looks sloppy today offensively. You know, I know they have 17 points, but they've just looked like they've had trouble getting their people on and off the field. They've had all of those procedure penalties, and that one, you know, just a tough, tough break. But uh, didn't look like it was too much to knock that ball out. Blitz coming off the corner. They're getting, and he threw the ball at the last minute. And Mallet is favoring his left arm as he gets up. Niall Davis is the bandit he was tossing it to. And Mallet has what looks like a brace on his left arm. I'm not so sure. We haven't heard anything about a shoulder injury, but that's his left arm. He flings it out there. I think that uh, Ryan Mallett, that that black brace you see is usually to keep your shoulder from moving too high. Boy, Niall Davis weaving his way inside the 30 yard line. It, it takes it to the 27. Well, Jimmy Johnson has taken over the chase lead, but Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick are hot in his heels. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Pepsi Max 400. It's in California on ESPN tomorrow, 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Our situation, third down. They're going to take it to the 20 yard line. Mallet, quick throw, has it, breaks a tackle. This is Childs, 
and he's going to be short of the first down by a couple. And Bobby Petrino is going to send his field goal unit out. I'm a little surprised by this. I thought, well, it, it does put you up a touchdown, so the math makes sense, but, you know, he, he, he ran the fake earlier. I assumed he may go for it here on fourth and a little bit inside of two. Ball's going to be placed down at the 29, so a 39-yard attempt. Zach Hocker, the freshman out of Russellville, Arkansas. Robert Flores, let's uh, go from Russellville to New York City. What do you got for us? All right, Ron, time to our AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Texas A&M bitter rival Texas Tech, their quarterback Taylor Potts, 462 yards, four touchdowns. He's got 17 on the season. They beat Baylor. Can text vote to 345-345 to take part and for a chance at a trip to the national championship. Thanks, Robert. Boy, over 400 yards. Baylor has really started putting some points on the board, and obviously, well, we saw and, and we saw Texas Tech against Texas just looked bad. I mean, Texas defensively obviously offered them a few problems, but uh, under 200 yards of total offense when we were up there in Lubbock, that was a shocker. So our situation: we have 5:04 to play, third quarter, and it. Once again, as a one touchdown ball game, 24 to 17, Arkansas. Tejada will kick it off. Now, I bragged on him off the top of the telecast for the fact that he already has six touchbacks on the year, one more today for a total of seven. But the head coach said last year they had him kicking at angles. This time they're just telling him to kick it away and kick it into the end zone. So far from. A, the 30, he has not been able to do that today. This one will not either. High spinner that's going to come down at the nine yard line. Great. Cyrus Gray wanted to kick off the turn. Well, Brett Favre's return to New York on ESPN's Monday Night Football as the Vikings take on the New York Jets, 8 30 uh, Eastern Time. Now, coverage begins at 7 o'clock Eastern with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's. Mark Sanchez, who struggled during the preseason, has come out and played very well, zero interceptions, and Brett Farr, frankly, has really struggled. Well, you know, he waited he's, so long. He's struggling off the field right yeah. now as well, and I'm wondering how much he'll be affected in that ball game on Monday evening. Of course, he gets Randy Moss, which maybe will be a help, but uh, you come back that late in camp, I don't care who you are. It's just tough to get into a rhythm. So the penalty moves the uh, ball back to the 13-yard line. Kristen Michael. You know, there's been some talk uh, in Aggieland about Gerard Johnson. Of course, he had surgery on his shoulder, his throwing shoulder during the offseason. There's been some talk, and Mike Sherman tried to put that to rest, said no, he's 100% and everything. But, you know, you watch that ball come out a couple of times today. I'm wondering as the season wears on if his arm's not getting a little tired. Near sideline, ball overthrown, and unprepared for it was Terrence McCoy. And, and Johnson, who has not, he doesn't have the strongest arm in college football, and so he's always been a little bit of a floater, but he's always had really good accuracy and good timing, and just not quite seeing that. Watch your coup, just checked in. He may have been in the ballgame, but they haven't thrown to him, and he is wide to the right at the bottom of your screen. Well, they swing it out of the backfield. That's Gray and Cyrus Gray will be denied the 20 yard line. So it'll be fourth down and it's Anthony Leon who uh, took his feet out from under him. AM's offense just not doing their defense many favors. 
come out go after the field goal you fumbled you give it the field goal now you go three and out and that defense you cannot continue to give the ball back to Mallet and company Leon now with seven tackles on the afternoon for the Razorbacks here's the boot driving spiral pushes him all the way back to the 26 yard line boy what a hit and he still is up and then goes down after a couple of more people to hit him. That's Lionel Smith who uh, really put the lumber on him on that hit. That's 52 yards on that kick. He is stopped near the 31 yard line by the 15, Kenny Brown. It's funny, you, you watch the eyes of everyone in this building and they start going up towards the gigantic screens that are above the field. You're at the 2 300 level. It's almost hard to watch the game. Those things are so right in your face. <laughs> Well, the Giants had a back who had the ball knocked away, and the coach asked him, What were you doing? He said, I was looking at myself in the big screen. Pumped it once, now throws and completes it for a couple of yard gain. Ball comes loose. AM jumping up and down, saying they have the football. And the officials are saying, Get off the field. You don't have the football. Now, Eddie Brown did a heck of a job, though, as that screen came along and he went to strip it. Out of the hands of. Let's watch Eddie Brown right here. Well, you know, the, the problem is going to be, uh, and that's DeAnthony Curtis, a receiver who came in to catch that ball. I think they will review it. The problem is, I don't think that you're going to have a definitive view of whether Curtis was on the ground before Brown pulled it out. It was a, a heck of an effort by Brown, but I'm just not sure he got it out. Before Curtis was on the ground. The Anthony Curtis, a junior out of Camden, Arkansas. Eddie Brown is a 295 pounder. The ruling on the field is under further review. Really heads up play by Brown. <laughs> I mean, I, Let's check this this last angle here. It, it, here's the problem. I, I think Brown had it, but that's not good enough. I just don't think that they can overturn this. Call on the field is catch runner down. I just don't think that they have enough video evidence. It's not indisputable to say that Eddie Brown pulled it out. Great effort, and he may well have had it. I just don't think that they have the video evidence to overturn the call on the field. They could see Mike Sherman not arguing uh, with anybody. He's uh, far more concerned about getting his offense in motion and, uh, and letting the officials just do what they are supposed to do. So being uh, checked over by the group upstairs and, and the, the way the challenge works uh, if he doesn't get it he'll lose a timeout and then he can't challenge again. However if he were to win the challenge he would be able to use that challenge one more time the rest of the ballgame and not use a timeout. Take one more look at another angle here. Actually an angle we showed you just a moment ago. Here comes Brown in, and he is trying to take the ball out right there. And in fact, the ball has already gone, and he has secured it. But as Ed said, is there indisputable evidence that it had happened before the knee was down by Curtis? No, that looked to me like again. I think that Brown took it away, but that's not good enough. It's got to be indisputable by what you see. And because of the way Curtis Brown's body was turned, we had the camera right on it nice and tight, but because his body had turned, there's no way you could tell. You've got to figure a guy with number 19 has some ball skills, right? Even though he's a six foot, 290 yeah. pound defensive tackle. After further review, the ruling on the field stands as called. Texas a and will be charged with the timeout. They also lose their challenge for the game. And just so you understand the, the language there, he didn't say it was confirmed. He said it stands. If it was confirmed, that means the video said no. In fact, they didn't cause a turnover. If it's confirmed, that's saying they didn't have indisputable evidence to overturn the call. 
So no more challenges on the afternoon for Texas A&M. They lose the timeout. And they also lose the challenge. But I think a worthy challenge. That was close enough yeah. if you're Mike Sherman. And heck, I mean, look where yeah. they would have gotten the football inside the 35 yard line. So it was worth the gamble, I think. Does Jarius Wright gain a lot of ground with is, every step? He is so quick. And I'll tell you, Demontre Moore made the tackle on him. But that looked like it was dead to rights. Moore looked like he had him right at the beginning. He bounced outside of him. The safety hunter came up, threw a juke on him. But every time he was making a move, he was gaining positive yardage. Right in motion. They have him blocking on this play, and the running play is going to go to the 48 yard line. Frederick will make the stop on Green. Well, that was a nice job by Jarius right there. Mm -hmm. As he came in motion, came down, ended yep. up blocking on a linebacker, washed him to the inside for a nice five, uh, five and a half call it yard gain. Well, on the first biggest down. thing is, I mean, the back is going by. You just get in his way. You don't have to. Take him off his feet. I don't have a pancake. Just, uh, no. just shield him. Exactly. And that wasn't going to happen because <laughs> <laughs> he was outweighed by about 60 pounds. Ball is dropped. Green made his own recovery, but on the pitch back, and that's going to lose. Wow, about four yards. Vaughn Miller is the man who was making the play. Well, it's kind of the uh, story of the day for the offenses. Two steps forward, three steps back. You go from a really nice second and four and a half to now almost third and ten. Here comes pressure from the outside. Vaughn Miller is there and the ball is knocked away, almost intercepted. Miller had a lot of pressure on the quarterback, Mallet. You know, I, I have not heard anything about a left shoulder injury for Ryan Mallett, but with that brace and the way he gets up every time, and and, and maybe this was a, an existing injury he suffered against Alabama, but uh, that ball floats on Mallett again. Has trouble with the ball getting away from him sometimes, but I think that Ryan Mallett is, is uh, his left shoulder is injured. Well, the Aggies with the return on. To 17. And McNeil can find no place to run. Hey, Arkansas special teams on coverage of kicks. Now here comes a late flag in. Nope, nope, there is none. Looked like a flag, but it was not. Anyway, their special teams have done a nice job on coverage today. Well, if you dial the clock back. Three years ago, when Bobby Petrino took over, uh, that was a really tough five and seven year. They got blown out of a few games, but uh, the entire team, special teams, defense, obviously offense, has uh, shown great improvement. Both these coaches in their third year. Cyrus Gray. Met by Anthony Leon, and that should be for Leon his eighth tackle of the afternoon. And this is just confusion by the right guard, Patrick Lewis. Leon, I mean, he just completely unblocked. Well, he's slipping off the field right now. Kind of a. Mm -hmm. See this, and uh, one of the trainers is is following him to ask him if he is okay. Terrell Williams comes in replacing it. Yeah. 
Johnson will go down at the five yard line. That's Tenarius Wright, their pass rushing specialist. Also, Colton Miles Nash was there. It's, and at some point, Johnson, he, he has plenty of time. Watch how long there's a stunt in the middle that's picked up perfectly by the left guard, Ike, in the center, Allen. But he just never stepped up in the pocket. He had a pocket there. If he steps up, maybe he can complete the throw or pull it down. And because the routes were so far, who knows how far he could have run. That is the end of the third quarter. So as we head to the final 15, we'll take a timeout. Arkansas by seven. Thanks to the Aggie uh, Corps of Cadets there bringing us back. We get an opportunity to see Arkansas, the AM, and and get to see all these youngsters. And it, it's a wonderful thing for them. They enjoy it as well. The Aggies have owned the fourth quarter so far this season. Can they do that today? Well, they're not starting in a very good position, <laughs> third and 22. I would expect a screen here to try to get this at least away from their goal line. But they're going to need their defense, I think, to make a play to win this game. Johnson shovel pass good call. Well on a third down and not quite a mile but really close to it three quarters. Yeah. <laughs> they wound up with uh, with a good pickup on the play at least they've got some space as far as kicking. Yeah they, they just had to get some type of play a positive yardage. Well that's. The thing I was talking about the Aggies 52 to 10 they've outscored the opposition in the fourth quarter this year. Hanging spiral not going to turn over and the catch is made and I'm impressed with it. Yes. The nice job Adams folks was looking right into a sun that is it, it begins to set to the west. Arkansas is looking right into that to catch punts. There you see it off to the right and he was looking straight into that sunshine and he never wavered. I remember the old Dallas Stadium you know with that open roof which the roof is closed today. How difficult that was now with the new one with the Look end zones that. being open. Uh, it is something. That's what he was looking at. Did you see that glare coming through there. That's tough. Very very tough at this time of day. It's tough for anybody but Joe Adams. <laughs> which is fine by him. I'll tell you Joe Adams is a really impressive football player. Everything he does. A&M showing blitz in the middle and now they they stay at home. That was Garrick Williams who was creeping up and now he comes and they pick him up. And as the sweep comes the other way. Aggies do a nice job of putting a, a seal on that one. Vaughn Miller will be credited with the tackle. Well, coming into this season, Gerard Johnson, of course, was the Big 12 Offensive Preseason Player of the Year, and Ryan Mallett mentioned not only for the Heisman but as a big-time NFL prospect. But they've both had their struggles today. A couple of bad throws by Mallett, including that one interception. But for Gerard Johnson, and, and you know, looking at his body language walking off the field, he looks like he's starting to get very, very frustrated. Malik hands it off and this running play will go for about a half yard and that's it. And I have to think Malik is looking toward the bench where he was standing for the last two plays with that ball on that hash mark that sun was right, right in, his, in his face. Yeah. Yep, you can see him squinting looking over trying to get there. And it, it will be difficult you know looking down luckily the stands the two level of stands should be between him and his receiver but that is an awful lot of light. Well there it is right there you can see how glaring it is as he comes up and calls an audible. No, throws it has it complete at the 50 that's Herndon Javante Herman who is a true freshman out of Jacksonville and I mean he reached up and grabbed a tall pass and brought it down for 16. Top of your screen Herndon just cuts underneath the two vertical routes and a really good catch a high throw by Mallet. 
But Herndon snares that out of the air. How many times do you see a receiver have to jump up and cradle that? But this young man, a true freshman, does a wonderful job of snatching it because if he has to jump, I'm not sure he gets the first down. Well, that, that freshman earned his new red shoes. That pass thrown low at the 30, incomplete. It's uh, Childs that he was looking for. Well, and they're lucky. That right now, they're in the middle of the field where there it's are shady. some shadows. Exactly. <laughs> I think they want to avoid getting to the uh, 37 to uh, about the 27-yard line right in there. Yeah, it, it's kind of like they're standing under or on the edge of a tree right here <laughs> in the shade. 24-17, Arkansas leads. We have 12 and a half minutes to play in our ball game. Blitz coming off the corner. Vaughn Miller. Ball is caught in the area he vacated, and Childs is going to be tackled at the 40. And I'm telling you, that was a good, persistent effort. And he finally was brought down by Dustin Harris. Dustin primarily a nickelback, but he has two interceptions on the year. One of those, a touchdown return. And here you go. You've got him to third down. Vaughn Miller is going to line up over the right tackle. Let's see if he can bring some pressure. Pass thrown well behind the receiver. Childs was having trouble figuring out if I think Mallet is kind of beating yeah. himself up over yeah. that uh, rather than the receiver. I couldn't tell if he was gesturing that. And look at the frustration on Bobby Petrino just yeah, pulling on that hair. I think both of these quarterbacks a little or excuse me both of these coaches a little frustrated with the lack of accuracy of the quarterbacks today. They just neither of them have really been spot on. All right here is that same kick again and the deep man right away. Ran away from it and it goes in to the end zone. Now that's Petrino as he walks the sideline and watch the reaction by Mallet after he throws the ball. Yep, he is gesturing. Come back to me. Come back to me. And let's take a look at today's good hands play brought to you by Allstate. Well, a big bright spot is Jeff Fuller for Texas A&M. That time he beats Darius Winston. So Willie Robinson, the defense coordinator, switches over and puts Isaac Madison. Same result. And who did we see on the next play? Ramon Broadway then went over to that side to try to cover Fuller. 124 yards receiving today. And Broadway is out there with him right now. Just gonna run it. Heads to the sidelines and he picked up the first down. He went diving. Jerry Franklin was there to help assist him out of bounds. But you can see the official has placed it one yard beyond where that yellow line was. You know, and, and I think you've got to be careful if you're Texas A&M with short routes right now. Your receivers are going to be looking right back into that sun that That's we right. saw. So it's exactly you've got right. to be careful about what you're calling in that 10 yard range. Now they're going to keep it on the ground. And it'll be Kristen Michael tackled by Alfred Davis. Now, Michael's been running hard, but I mean, it, it is brutal coming in from that side of the field. But uh, can you imagine if you had to turn back to find a football? Catch an out over there? Yeah, no good luck. <laughs> it might hit you right between the eyes. Well, it could if you'd get never stuck in your face mask. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they keep it on the ground again. It's going to be a yard gain by Kristen Michael. This time, Jericho Nelson uh, making the play for Arkansas. And Nelson, one of the guys that uh, Willie Robinson, the defensive coordinator, mentioned by name as the guys who've been with them, played a ton of ball over the last three years. And he, but he, they brought him over from the secondary. Now, folks, he's playing linebacker, which says something about why they have such speed at linebacker. Third down. They need to take it to the 41. Now that's going to be look to me like the Quinta Jones was trying to guess the snap. A lot of finger pointing. It was them. No, it was them. Tell you, if it is against De Quinta Jones, 
that may be a first now without them having to run a play here because it's right at five yards they need to pick mm -hmm. up. He was lined up over Evan Ike who was questionable today with a stinger. That ball false start oh. 65 to go against the Aggies. So rather than picking up the first down it'll be stepped off against them at a third down at a different play call here about nine nine and a half yards to pick up the first. Well it didn't look to me like Ike moved until DeQuinta Jones was in the neutral zone. Remember we saw earlier when you do that that's a penalty against the defense. Four false starts on a and m this afternoon and of course we have documented Arkansas has had their problems with that situation as well. Fuller comes back to make the catch. And I'll tell you, when there is such a size difference, Isaac Madison is 5'11 and Fuller is 6'4, 220, and he comes back for the football. There's just not a lot that can be done. And that's really good coverage. Uh, you know, you're on it. Good, good throw. Nice, accurate throw by Gerard Johnson. And Fuller was just beyond where that bright sun was. Straight ahead, big opening, has five. Has 10, cut it off at 13 yards for Cyrus Gray. Jericho Nelson could have saved a touchdown with that tackle right there. Cyrus Gray not getting a whole lot of touches today, but just his fourth carry. Kristen Michael has been the guy with 18. The fresh legs came in and got it and busted one. They run the sweep. He cuts it back into the middle. And Gray will have, let's call it about four yards in the play. Ramon Broadway, number 26. He is a senior out of Evan, uh, even Evangel Christian. Of course, that is in Shreveport. A lot of players come out of that school. Seven tackles for him this afternoon. Tannehill. <laughs> Tannehill saying, don't throw that flag <laughs> yeah. now. Prior to the snap, false start. Wow. 76 offense, Boy, five three. yard penalty, that's second down. Joko. Unbelievable. Tonight on ABC, the 23rd ranked Florida State Seminoles take on 13th ranked Miami. Some of the West Coast are going to see SC taking on Stanford. Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Tonight at ABC at 8 Eastern at 5 o'clock Pacific. Now, the Aggies have started using a double step from the quarterback. Now, I don't know if the first one, if they're trying to draw an offside, but somehow. It seems to be messing them up. It, it seems to be messing them up, is my point. Yeah. Johnson zings this one, and that's a nice defensive play. Fuller was there, and that is Tremaine Thomas, who got there just in time to get a fingertip on it. No, well, that was uh, the ball. Fuller cuts to the outside. Ball was just a little late, a little high, a little behind, and that allows Thomas to come over and make a play. But if that ball is zinged on time, I'm not sure that Thomas would have been able to get there. Now, I think you're in two down territory. You know, that shovel pass might not be a bad call here. Thomas really gave up his body on that play to make sure he got to it. Third down and 11. Razorbacks showing blitz and here they come up the middle off the corner ball is thrown for the end zone and looking back into the sun and he can't hold on at the two yard line and that's Jeff Fuller and right now I have to say that Mother Nature was the second defender there that was Broadway who was trying to cover well they've tried a bunch of different guys covering Fuller and this is just really nice coverage by Broadway. And the sun is just right in the eyes. And Broadway gets away with one there. He, it, it was hard for the official to see to that side, but Broadway had a hold of the left bicep of Fuller. I'm not saying he would have made the catch. It still would have been a tough catch with that sun in his eyes, but uh, Broadway got away with a little one here. Uh, so it's going to be fourth down, and the decision uh, about to be made across the way by Mike Sherman. And it looks as though the Aggies are going to use a timeout to talk it over. 
Yeah, I think that Mike Sherman. Oh, there's a penalty flag. Yeah, they took the yeah. delay. Yeah. Delay game on the offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. So, no timeout, the reason for the whistle. I, I would have been shocked had they gone for it there on fourth down. I, yeah. You know, if you'd have picked up seven or eight yards, I could see it happening. But. Here's the boot cooking, trying to cook it to the sideline. And Joe Adams is saying, get away from it. I can't see it, and you can't <laughs> see it either. <laughs> Arkansas still by seven. Let's take a quick timeout. On November 4th, 2006, this dynamic sophomore led the Razorbacks into Columbia to face the Gamecocks. McFadden used his superior speed and cutting ability to rack up over 200 rushing yards and two touchdowns, leading Arkansas to a victory over South Carolina. Text VOTE to 345-345 from your mobile phone to vote and for a chance to win a trip to the national championship game. College football on ABC. Brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Chevrolet. And Dr. Pepper. There's nothing like a pepper. Well, the gentleman you're looking at, that's our technical director, Craig Short. Now, everything you see on your TV at home is controlled by the video switcher that he operates. And, folks, that has over 1,000 buttons. By the way, he is a proud graduate of the University of Arkansas, class of 1993. Yeah, he was pretty excited about this. He lives in San Antonio, so rather easy for him to get to the ball game today. He was pretty excited about not having to make two or three stops to get to where we normally go. See the Aggies moving around defensively, and now here comes another flag. And uh, let's see, turnabout, fair play? Is that what we're? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boy. Prior to the snap, false start. Man. Offensive center, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Yeah, you know that, that silent snap count. You mentioned, Ron, that uh, Gerard Johnson is lifting that leg twice to make sure the defense doesn't get a bead, but. I almost feel like these two teams need to go back under center and start calling a snap count because they're both just terrible today. Arkansas had 10 first half penalties. That's only their first penalty in the second half. So obviously the head coach did address it. So you just made lemonade out of lemons, didn't you? <laughs> now this is Broderick Green and he'll take it out close to the first down line. They're going to have about two and a half yards to pick it up. And right here is where the lip service that was given to the run game by Bobby Petrino and his staff during the bye week about having to run the game, run the ball. You're up seven, 727 left in the fourth quarter. If this, if you're going to have a run game and you want to develop it, this is when you need it. Good block by the fullback. And Broderick Green is going to take it for the first down as he slides to the outside. ABC's new drama Detroit 187. Great cops made in Detroit. And when it's your hometown, everything is personal. Detroit 187 on ABC Tuesday at 10, 9 Central. And now Tim DeRuder, the new defensive coordinator at AM, he's got to start walking his safeties down if they're going to pound you. And of course, then that opens up Mallet for a deep ball on a play action. Well, play action. That's what they're trying to do, and the pressure is going to get to him. And that is Demontre Moore. Demontre Moore has been very impressive. A freshman out of Rowlett, Texas. Well, and the coaches were talking about how Von Miller has taken this young man under his wing. They play the same position, and that's just boy, he's quick. Yeah, that, it, well, it, you know, it's so tough. They said he's long, which means he's got long arms, and that was the fullback Van Stuman. And, and all that Devontre had to do, or Devontre, excuse me, had to put his hands on him, and there's no way that the fullback can get a hold of his jersey. Second down, pressure again, and they throw the screen back to that side. Blocker in front, off the sideline, at the 30-yard line is Ronnie Wingo, and they say out of bounds at the 31. Not enough for the first down, but the most important thing, if you're Arkansas, closer to picking that thing up, and of course, the next play, they want to make sure that they stay in bounds because we got 6.09 left. Well, all and, of a sudden, that clock's going to really go downhill. And good job by Wingo. Tough job catching it, but he is so good out of the backfield. 
He ran a 10 5 900 meters in high school and he's almost 230 pounds with good hands. What a nice change up call by Bobby Petrino. Arkansas 5 of 14 on third down conversions. Green has the first down for Arkansas. And the minute he made it, it was at the 545 mark. Ed. Now, let's see if they can really milk that clock on this run right here. Well, and if you're going to have a run game, you better have a fullback. Right behind Mallet, watch Van Steumann. He's going to come up and block one on one against Michael Hodges. And that, that you just can't block it any better as a fullback. We saw him miss the block on the pass pro. But if you're going to have a power running game, you better have a guy who can lower his shoulder like Steumann did there. Well, so Ben Cleveland with a good block to aid his running back. First down, they keep it on the ground again. Green tackle by Spencer Neely. Well, I think for AM, I, I don't think you have a choice now but to bring your safeties down and get them to, you know, nine, ten yards from the line of scrimmage because uh, Arkansas has shown you what they want to do here. And just hope if you're Tim DeRuiter, the defense coordinator, that your cornerbacks can hold up. Right now it's uh, Terrence Frederick and Coriel Judy. Safety's creeping up, looking under pressure, going to be sacked. <laughs> and it's Sean Porter. Third time that they have gotten to Mallet today. No. So the final is in. The number one team in the land has uh, has fallen to the old ball coach. 35. What was it, Bob? 35. 35 21 the final. The Gamecocks. You think there might be a party or two tonight mm -hmm. in Columbia? Well, wow, what a big penalty on Ryan Mallett. Was just called for a personal foul. There was a scrum after he was sacked. And he started kicking his legs and was pushing around and was called for it. And he's arguing that call right now, but what a huge penalty on Mallet. So the situation, third down from the 20 yard line. They got to go all the way out to the 48 to pick up the first down. Mallet. Safety valve right over the middle. That's Wingo. 30, 35, and he's almost back to the original line of scrimmages. Michael Hodges puts a stop on him. Well, you know, it, it was almost like Bobby Petrino didn't want to trust the run game completely. I know they got to a second and ten, which is typically a pass down on that series, but you, you still get the sense doesn't quite trust it all the way with the clock running you'd think it would have been a run call the head coach just came over to talk to his quarterback he keeps insisting he got an elbow but you know the one thing for people watching this game that may have come in late we mentioned again this is an SEC group of officials it is not a Big 12 group so let's take a timeout 24 17 Arkansas All right, let's show you what happened on the play. Did Mallet pick up the 15 yard penalty? Well, as he gets sacked and goes to the ground, watch, he's going to throw. I don't want to call it a punch, but his arm definitely moves and hits Mathis. You can see 92 as he goes to get up right there. Look to me like, look to me like Ryan Mallet threw a punch in the pile. So it was the right call. Oh, this is a boomer. Way, way back. Fair catch is signal for and wisely so at the 11 yard line by Neal. 52 yards on the kick. It is time now to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Now Ryan Mallett finds his tight end Ben Cleveland who was uncovered and then it became the long ball to Jeff Fuller. Really the only consistent offense it got a little bit of the run game going but for Texas A&M the only consistent offense they've had today fuller seven catches 142 yards in that one touchdown. So the Yankees trailing by seven take it over. At the 12-yard line, and absolutely nothing. Jericho Nelson 
is there to stop the play and Cyrus Gray. Now Nelson was unblocked he had walked out to a slot receiver. But he came charging and now Texas A&M with a negative to start bad field position that clock is starting to melt away. You get the sense this is going to be their last chance. Clock runs at three minutes and 20 seconds to play. Johnson going to go long throwing the near sideline and that thing is closer to Bobby Petrino than it is to Fuller. And there's a flag in the backfield. They're going to get uh, a and for holding. Wow. Beckett a, was really coming with some pressure. Yeah. Just a tough day for the Aggies offensively just getting it worse. Well this is where we, you know you mentioned earlier in the game how much Arkansas rotates that defensive line and here's where it pays off. Holding number 76 offense that penalty is refused. Third down. Because uh, you know if you are only able to play five or six defensive linemen and that's Luke Jokel. That's freshman. Seven penalties this half against the Aggies. Ten total for them. So both teams are much much higher in that category than they would uh, like to be but then they're accustomed to third down they got to take it all the way out to the 22 yard line pass almost intercepted intending for watch a coup and Robert Flores in New York let's check with you Round number one has gone down. South Carolina gets three touchdowns from Marcus Lattimore. Last time Alabama gave up three touchdowns to one player in a single game. 2003, James Banks did it for Tennessee. South Carolina with the upset. Tonight's game on ABC, 8 o'clock Eastern. Jimbo Fisher's Florida State team taking on Miami. Well, the punt there which is called for and made at the 48 yard line. And now, as we take a timeout, Arkansas needs to worry about getting 306 off the clock, and they win. Hey, college football fans, now it's time for you to put your college on the map. What you got to do, you got to build your own campus from scratch with ESPNU College Town. When you find your school, you pick your buildings and recruit players. You can even challenge your friends across the country to see whose program is number one. So what you got to do, go to be the dean.com right now to start playing. College Town. Make sure you follow the rules in your recruiting. What would you name yours, Ed? Know when you can text. I, don't, well, I went to University of Washington. I think you build a pretty nice campus up there. Pretty good to start with. Hit behind the line of scrimmage is green. And now timeout has been called by Texas A&M. And here are the news and notes of college football. Buckeyes dominate the Hoosiers. Two Ohio State uh, number two. Defeated Indiana 38 to 10. Terrell Pryor 24 of 30. Nebraska, as you know, defeated K State 48 13 on Thursday. And look at the bottom of down here. Look at the numbers on Steven Garcia. Wow. Number 19, South Carolina upsets number one, Alabama 35 to 21. But folks, you talk about efficiency 17 of 20 for 201 yards and three touchdowns. And, and Arkansas, of course, very happy to see that. Uh, you know, they've still got their work cut out for them here after a big loss on first down but they needed help to stay in the race in the West and uh, they'll travel to Auburn next week which will go a long way in determining who represents the West in the SEC championship game but because of that head to head loss they're going to need Alabama to lose at least once more in conference but uh, think of the shockwaves across college football Boise State gets a little help. With Alabama losing, Ohio State's going to jump up. Nebraska sitting there at number seven, starting to look impressive. Taylor Martinez, a, a guy that uh, they didn't even know what position he was going to play when they recruited him. They just knew he was a good enough yeah. athlete, but he yeah. was spectacular the other night against Kansas State. Second down. Clock will start. 301 left to play. No timeouts left for Texas AM. 
Yeah, and, and for Arkansas, you have to keep it on the ground because you can't help them out by stopping the clock. By throwing an incompletion. Yeah. That's right. So I, I'd, I'd be really shocked unless it were something. Well, yeah, I'd even be shocked then because the way that uh, these offenses have played, even a screen has been difficult. How many times have we seen a running back get caught up in the wash? The ball almost get intercepted. So I think they're going to let this run all the way down and then call a timeout. I like this. I like this strategy by Bobby Petrino. Eat as much the as The clock can. is going to be all the way down to like 210 or 211 when the uh, when the clock runs out. It's at nine now at eight. That's the play clock. And uh, Mallet still talking about that punch he threw in the pile, arguing his call, his cause. But uh, clearly that was the right. Uh, Shall they let it run all the way down to two minutes and ten seconds? Then they call a timeout to make sure they don't add five more yards onto the situation. It'll be third down. They need to take it down to the A&M 42 yard line. But most importantly, since A&M cannot stop the clock, if you can get anything that consumes a little time here, then you could be down very close to one minute yeah, you left gotta, in the ball game. You got to figure five or six seconds for the run for them to reset it. Call it two, and uh, with a 40 second clock, you, you you're going to get down there to like 120, 118, 115 somewhere in there, which gives A&M a chance. But without the timeouts. Uh, that'll be a long way to go needing a touchdown to tie not a field goal. Well, and, and you look at both of these teams a non conference game a little late in the season but for the SEC West of course Alabama now dropping down and of course Arkansas going to Auburn. But for A&M even though they're at the bottom of that pile I, I think both of these the Big 12 South and the SEC West are going to get messy before you know who's going to represent each side in the championship game. Third down. See the blitz coming off the corner and the running play goes right in that direction. Vaughn Miller will make the tackle for the Aggies. Now if they had some <laughs> a timeout be a great place to call it yep. but they don't have one and the clock is uh, uh, it's going to be in the 125 range yep. when it's uh, when it's down completely burned and even though A&M hasn't done it much in this game they're very comfortable in the hurry up remember we said they had 106 plays against Oklahoma State so having to hustle around is something they're used to let's watch that snap count though that might harm them again on this drive special teams coaches waving frantically on the sideline waving something off that they had called and uh, they don't have to worry about it because they <laughs> the timeout has been called. Uh, I'd love to know exactly what they were waving off that they all of a sudden changed their mind and did not want Arkansas to run. But at the same time I think what they did on third down and what they did on fourth is very wise even though you know you may only be talking about a second or two on each play that you burn by waiting for one second. But that's an entire play so it just guarantees that A&M will not be able to run one additional play as the clock runs down and uh, every second there matters. So I think this is very good clock management by Bobby Petrino because you had those three timeouts. You can get it right down to the nubbins of the 40 second clock and um, ensure that Texas A&M may be short one play when maybe they'll need it. So here comes the punt. Arkansas leading by seven. We have 125 left in the ball game, and here's the boot. Good coverage kick, very high. Fair catch is signaled for and made at the 20 by McNeil. 40 yards on the kick, and now it is down to 118. And and you've got to, as a senior quarterback, you've got to know nothing in front of the first down marker in the middle of the field. You just don't have enough time. To do that everything has to be near the sideline or beyond the sticks or throw it away or run and get out of bounds but you cannot throw something in the middle of the field short of the first down on this drive. Johnson ball is tipped. 
And that was Demario Ambrose, senior out of Mobile, Alabama. And his defensive coordinator agreed yesterday that he is the most improved player that they have on the defensive side of the ball. Well, and he's a watch the get off by Beckett 91, and this causes Johnson to step up into the pocket and get closer to the rush. Perfect timing. Mm -hmm. He watched the quarterback all the way to minute he threw. He got that big mitt up there and knocked it to the turf. Second down and 10. 113 to play. Looking for Fuller. Can't come down with it. Isaac Madison with the cover. And, and as scared as Arkansas is of Fuller going deep, I think right now you have to have the first down. Of course, you're going to go for it on fourth down, but I think you have to have Fuller on the outside to the left. Have him run a vertical, maybe a post, take everybody with him. And then you have Swope lined up to the inside. Have Swope run down and run an out cut beyond the sticks over to the left but use Fuller to run off the coverage numbers for Johnson this quarter two of eight thirty four yards here's the pressure the ball is caught by Fuller on a comeback a deep comeback Madison will make the tackle well and the Arkansas fans not happy with the the spot but he did catch that beyond the 30 yard line and then came back. I'm not sure if it was beyond the, it was at the 32 but he he certainly had the first down gain of 12 first down they have it at their own 32 four man rush to the sideline Swope will make the catch and then step out of bounds immediately just short of the 40. Well and the thing that you're if you are Mike Sherman and his staff calling plays it's obvious that Willie Robinson is playing off coverage. They're not blitzing anybody. They're, they're they're playing off everybody. Don't get run by. So you can work those sidelines. And as Tannehill comes out, his fresh legs over to the right to trips. I think that's what they're going to do is be able to nickel and dime it a little ways. Johnson got to be sacked, and that's Beckett. Jake Beckett. Well, and this is just going to kill the clock for Texas A&M. Beckett, who had that huge sack against Georgia that forced the punt on their last drive, comes up big again. Now to stop the clock, he throws the ball into the ground. And, and now you get yourself to fourth, fourth down, down. Yeah. yeah you know I, I know they were scrambling a little bit but boy it's awfully difficult to not run a play there on third down but uh, well by the time he'd have gotten it off it had been inside of 15 seconds yeah. so uh, you know it <laughs> you're going to have to just continue to move the, the chains anyway well Fuller's got your guy down here at the bottom fourth down to have another play they got to take it beyond the 42. 25 seconds left. And now here comes a flag. Oh, they got it. Play game, wow. offense, number one, five yard penalty remains full down. Well, that's just been the story of the game for AM. Just really struggled. comes up to bump on Fuller. Fourth down. Looking. Ball delivered and it is caught. And there he is, Wachaku, the man we've been talking about. MIA. He just hasn't been around. So he makes the catch and the Aggies coming quickly to the line of scrimmage. Well, they're, they're trying to get bodies on and off the field. This is going to cost them some precious seconds. Clock is running. 16 down to 15. Johnson calls for the snap. Pressure off the corner is going to go long near sideline to Fuller, and a flag comes down. Pass interference called against Broadway. So, of course, in college football, it is a 15 yard penalty, not a spot foul. So, you're going to look at the ball inside the 40 with six seconds. I think you're only going to get one throw. 
I'm not sure unless you run a quick out cut and you can get it on a three step drop. I think you're looking at one more play for Texas A&M. Yep never never got his head around and just stuck his hand out. That's the proper call. You know what. <laughs> it's not necessarily a bad decision on his part though. And you're going to fall down and let the big guy catch no, the ball and take no, it in no, for a no, touchdown. No, 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 no. So now they still got only six seconds. And regardless of what the down, the ball is 39 yards away. Yeah, and, and I think maybe this one has to go into the end zone. You get the trips to the right. Looks like they're going to throw it that way. Timeout, Arkansas. That is their third and final timeout. Willie Robinson said, you know, let's don't take this thing to the locker room. <laughs> let's. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, make sure that everyone is on the same page. So they're going to talk it over on the near sideline. Situation: Arkansas by seven, 24-7. We have six seconds left in the ball game. No timeouts left for either team, and A&M is 39 yards away. And what Bobby Petrino is saying, and I, you know, I'm not so sure he didn't have an argument, was that Fuller was pushing as much on Broadway as Broadway was pushing on him. But uh, Petrino, an offensive coach his entire life, has to know that they're almost always going to call that on defense. But I think he had legitimate argument. Fuller was in there fighting with Broadway. And what you have to be careful about if you're Texas A&M is a sack. And, and uh, the way that they've been getting after, and you've got Beckett lined up on Luke Jokel, the freshman left tackle, true freshman left tackle. You better get a guard out there to help him. Three man rush very deep secondary. In fact one man in the end zone. Johnson. Wants to snap. Gonna go Hill Mary to the right side of the end zone. The ball is tipped up and intercepted by Arkansas Tremaine Thomas. And the clock is run out. A&M is going to roll Johnson to his right. Good protection. Jokel did a great job there on Beckett, but they had Fuller trailing. You could see Fuller coming back to the inside there. Got caught up a little bit with Nelson. But boy, that almost worked out pretty well. If Fuller was two steps beyond, he may have gotten there. And of course, at 6'4, 